this is very interesting webinar on on market profile, which will be looking at concepts and micro visual structures. And today's our guest, honorable guest, is Mr. Rajendran. He is renowned in India and Asia for market profile. He's a direct disciple of the legend D Jim Dalton. He is also the mind behind open source trading framework, which we will be talking about later during the webinar. Uh, he has more than a decade of market profile experience and 15 plus years he has been trading. He trades the most liquid stocks, Bank Nifty Nifty. I think he also dabbles sometimes in ES and NQ, which we will discuss. He has been a system designer, writer, mentor. He has published many open source codes for trading software for AMI Broker as well for TradingView. Um, he is very passionate about understanding the market context and market generated information. Um, and he is a systems trader. We are so honored that we have a trading visionary with us. Mr. Rajendran, welcome to this very interesting webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Nalin. Thank you for inviting me to talk in your forum. Uh, that's an honor to me to uh, talk in this uh, wonderful session. So, uh, as I said, uh, today's talk is all about uh, market profile concepts and the micro visual structures. Sure. So one of the uh, most uh, uh, disappointing thing, right? So, it's nothing but the market profile and order flow kind of tools has a very limited resources and it has a far reach from the regular retail traders. And many retail traders sadly see this as an yet another tool. I think maybe this session could change the perception. So that's what the ultimate idea behind that. And a uh, little bit about me as uh, uh, Nalin had already said that uh, uh, I'm a system trader and also a discretionary trader, but still a pure uh, visual rule-based trader. And I've been using market profile and order flow since 2012 onwards. I'm also the creator of Open Algo. So it's an open source algo trading platform. Uh, particularly for traders who want to do systematic trading. And uh, I'm also the author of marketcalls.in. I've been writing in market calls since 2006 onwards. Primarily, I write about uh, trading strategies, trading softwares. I many times post open source trading models. Close to close, I had posted 100 plus trading systems on AMI Broker, Python, TradingView. And uh, since 2012 onwards, my addiction shifted not only towards system trading, but majorly towards market profile and order flow. So since then, I had written a lot of articles on market profile and order flow. And uh, if you ask me what is market profile? So, so uh, at this point, I just wanted to understand what prompted you to pick up market profile? Because no. in 2015, means 10, 12 years, people didn't even know about what is a market. Pro How did you stumble upon it and what made you move towards it? So, as I said, I'm a system trader. So back then I used to work as a telecom prof. Uh, my profession is mostly into telecom. So I worked as a, a 3G, 4G network configuration engineer. And uh, one of my friend, uh, uh, he talked about, uh, so you should explore market profile. But I was searching mostly for, like every other trader, I was searching for an edge. I was searching for a better entry points, exit points. Um, so that is where I stumbled across uh, market profile. Only my uh, one of my friends recommended me that you should learn market profile and order flow. Uh, it uh, It is where you can uh, uh, fine-tune your existing strategy. So I, I thought like I could try to fine-tune my existing systems so that is the reason I started learning market profile. Uh, but uh, initially, I'm not able to get anything like every other regular trader. Uh, uh, market profile seems to be like uh, kind of Greek and Latin to me. I have to fight. Many times I have to give up. Again, I have to fight. I have to give up. I have very limited resources from YouTube there. So I have to go and stumble upon a couple of... Uh, there are nice uh, uh, Indian mentors. They posted a couple of Indian mentors. They posted about uh, the mm -hmm. basics of market profile. And finally, I got stumbled into Jim Dalton's videos. And okay. then uh, I have to go on through the repeatedly. I had to go on through his every video. Even now, the video has been available in the internet. Almost every video goes through like one hour or two hours. Yeah. Ample amount of uh, information uh, I'm able to grab from the videos. And uh, luckily, I had a chance to meet uh, Jim Dalton face to face mm -hmm. as well. 
I also had a chance to learn from him one of his session mm-hmm. not a, not a okay. complete session but I, I think I would say like some 7 days or 10 days of session he conducted online I had a chance to attend his uh, session as well so the face to face interaction what I got so I mm-hmm. was invited in a forum uh, to talk about systematic trading and Jim Dalton also uh, spoken in the same, same forum so he talked about market profile so fantastic learning I got Uh, probably okay. I, so i would say like that is around 2015 16 okay. there's a place where i would say like i got a real perspective about how we should look into the market profile this was in thailand i remember yes, you had posted in thailand a... bangkok yes somebody created a picture made out of the tpo blocks for him right yeah i have that maybe i could share yeah uh, so yeah. it was and meanwhile uh, uh, just respo- just responding to a question answer this will be recorded and we will be posting the video in the next few days on the youtube channel so this is responding to a question thanks yeah so this is like some of the information we collected from uh, jim dalton speech and right one of the one of my friend rishi umrania uh, um, rishi mm-hmm. umrania so back then he was a market profile trader but now he moved to like uh, netflix kind of okay so i think it's a, it's a pretty old article but uh, so yeah i is... read this article and it was very interesting yeah. actually so there's a pro- profile picture completely made up of tpos right so oh wow beautiful so the entire picture is made up of uh, numbers letters a b c <laughs> so it's it's a very gift nice. that, uh, they had provided and uh, i yeah. think this is me with uh, jim dalton i mean this is like almost a decade old now <laughs> yeah it's good to have these anecdotes it makes the learning even more interesting actually because yeah it just shows how much people enjoy the learning part so that they are able to pick something up like this and make it the tpo into a photograph of mr jim dalton yes yes exactly very nice some of my photo is not coming oh yeah that's it came yeah yeah nice smart <laughs> very smart pick. but that, that's a fantastic learning experience which i got from jim Indeed. dalton So, so like you said, uh, the market profile tool has been made to sound very esoteric and very somehow this tool has been kept outside the the normal retail, and this is our effort through FQ trading. It's not kept outside. Uh, I, I would say like it's not kept out kept outside. So market profile, right? It requires a little bit of screen time experience. Absolutely, and uh, Absolutely. it also requires uh, some sort of self practice, dedicated practice. It's like kind of you go to the gym and then uh, you build your muscles. Not on day one, not on day two, but you have to go to the gym on a daily basis. So some sort of a continuous effort is something similar. Effort is what it is required over here. Right, right. So how many of us like went to the gym and then give up on the uh, first day month, one week? Uh, some people even day Absolutely. one. So, Right. so something Actually, similar to that is what market absolutely. is all about simple concept but it requires dedicated practice because a lot of nuances right. are there right so let's j- jump into the market profile part uh, thanks rajendran for this very interesting in anecdotes yeah so market profile i would say like it is not just an indicator it is more of a visual tool to understand what the buyers and sellers are trying to do in the markets so more than that i would say like what kind of traders and what kind of uh, buyers and sellers are interactive in the markets sometimes we might be able to see some smart traders coming and trading in the markets sometimes we will be able to see weaker hands so i would say like market profile is one of the tool which can tell you what stronger hands are doing and what weaker hands are also trying to do in the markets right so that is where the micro structure comes into the picture so later on we'll talk about that usually market profile is visualized in the form of tpos tpos means time price and opportunity so it's kind of a uh, 360 degree overview it gives in terms of uh, price and time and uh, opportunity which is nothing but volume so in a single picture it shows the uh, multiple dimensions of in- multiple dimensions of information in a single picture over here so price time and mm-hmm. volume so market profile one thing you can uh, very clearly see that almost if you could have seen every day we we see something called price distribution so here 
in when you are uh, watching market profile as a beginner you should two things you have to focus on price action combined with price distribution right so it is uh, majority of the time market profile is nothing but uh, visualizing the price in the form of price distribution so we visualize the price in the form of uh, letters right so you'll be seeing a lot of letters letter a to letter m is what you'll be seeing every half an hour a letter will get generated and every day i'll be getting a structure like this if you could see the structure the structure will be forming a bell curve shaped structure this is a one particular day structure right likewise every day we'll be getting <clears throat> different different structure and this structure helps positional traders and intraday traders to make trading decisions and during the live markets we'll be seeing how the structure is evolving over a period of time the more you are having an experience in watching this price distribution uh, you will get to know more about the repeated trading behavior how traders visually they come and trade how how they trade something called exactness right so I'll, later on i'll talk about the concept of exactness what does it really means because that is a fundamental part behind the tracking the smart money as well as the weaker money as well so if we can define what is smart money and weak money at this point of time because uh... in the group we have a very varied range of members rajin from yes. from very experienced to very novice so the idea is to get everybody involved and get them on the same page uh, See, so one a, is yeah so sure. I, i have a complete different picture about what a smart money and uh, what a uh, uh, what a dumb money is all about so <laughs> the common view is like uh, smart money means institutions dumb money means uh, they are like uh, uh, small retail traders okay. that is what the generic view but if you ask me smart money who is smart money if you ask me many people agree that warren buffett is smart money right mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. people agree that the late rakesh injinwala is smart money mm -hmm. and many people uh, agree that ramesh damani is smart money but the question here is are they smart money in my time frame i i'm an intraday trader Hmm. If if today Warren Buffett is buying, or today if Ramesh Damani or any other uh, big institution is coming and buying, does it means like they become a smart money in my time frame? Because I'm an intraday hmm. trader. So what I will anticipate if I'm an intraday trader, I'm a positional trader. If some if I'm trying to spot smart money, I will expect that price to move immediately in that favor. Okay. Right. So uh, Rakesh Damani could be smart money. Rakesh Jinjunwala could be smart money, but they might be smart money for the next six months or a period of time only. They, their smartness will be reflected, not necessarily on the intraday itself. Right. So, in fact, their smartness is there. They are able to generate. They are able to absorb a lot of stocks without moving the money, without moving the price action. So that is where their smartness lies in many times, in many days action. No, no, I'm not talking about that. In my terms, right. if price is moving in my favor, I'm able to spot the Correct. smart money, and I'm right. able to spot today itself, and that level is holding, and price is moving in my favor. That is where I call that as a smart money. So basically, that smart money for... could be investor, institutional investors. That smart money could hmm. be big retail traders. That smart money could be big prop traders also. It could be anybody, but ideally, it's some big funds are involved over there, but they are ideally traders. it might so be for price. for a intraday trader any smart money is that which can make the price move yes yes right. so smart money is where who comes and defines the price level exactly at a certain level okay okay and they defend the price action and they are smart money 75% of the time i, I will not say like completely they are smart money but 75% uh, of the time you can sense the smartness in their price action visually we will be able to track it from the market profile so let's take it as the session goes uh, and second thing is we, when we talked about this profile yeah. so in the normal candles what we see is price is spread on the x axis over time but over here the price is like turn 90 degrees on the y axis so how do you differentiate a tpo and a candle chart and what sort of advantages you see with a tpo chart over candle chart i think see candle charts are definitely useful i will not say like i will not ignore once in a while i look into that but uh, mm -hmm. over a period of time i got trained to the uh, my eyes got trained to market profile so without candlestick also i can manage so most likely i'll be using i'll also still look into the candlestick charts i'll also look into some indicators but not during live markets but some of the additional add on tools i use indicators as an add on tools right so i use 
generally people say like market profile is a supportive tool but i'll say like market profile is one of my primary tool and i use other indicators as a primary supportive tool along with that so that uh, it it assists me in uh, uh, having a better view better clarity in my thinking whether my uh, clarity whether my thinking is right or not to assist that i'll add uh, extra uh, indicators along with that but primary Absolutely. tool is always the market profile for me uh, right from the start till the end maybe once in a while i'll go and look into the candlestick chart if i want to look into that but otherwise without looking into candlestick charts also uh, maybe uh, beginners may find it little difficult i've seen uh, many beginners they initially feel it little difficult but once they get the gist of market profile uh, i'll not say they'll be hating uh, uh, indicators what they will be getting is like they will be getting a new dimension to their learning they definitely they will get it by start observing market profile it's initially it's okay you see market profile also you see candlesticks also but over a period of time you yourself will discover that market profile will give you more nuances than a traditional candlestick charts uh, absolutely i completely agree with this yeah so uh, you you're asking something like uh, you said like uh, something about the balance and vertical 90 degree what is that uh, no no what i was asking is normally we see most of us are used to seeing the candle chart where we see that the price is spread over time, which is on the X axis. Yes. But yes. over here, the price is reflected on the Y axis and the time is also, uh, you know, squished together on the Y axis, like a um, in terms of a bell shape profile. Yeah, that, that's a nice question, but not necessarily. Instead of candlestick charts, what I will do is like I can, we can split the profile and we can see like similar to a candlestick chart structure. So here, let's say I'll go to a specific profile, I'll zoom to a point, and I'm using NinjaTrader 8. So if I right click and then split a particular day's price action, I'll be able to see the price action over here, so how the price action has been happening on that. Right. Topic. So instead of candlesticks, uh, generally in candlestick charts, we'll be bothering about where the open high wicks and everything. But here I don't bother about where it opened, where it uh, closed, uh, whether it's creating a tail or not. I'll be looking at a, at a structural level. So most likely I'll not just look only into the price action. Of course, I can look at the price action here. I can see here, right, uh, the that particular day on 16th of July, this is Nifty Future Charts. So I can clearly see that the price keeps going higher in the first uh, half an hour. That is letter A. So price opened it went down and it's able to get back up. B period, right. it started from 9.45 to 10.45. Again, it went a little bit down, again got back up. C period went back up and D period went back up. E also went back up. And then later on, market started crashing down and finally mm -hmm. it got settled down over here. I'm also able to see the price action also along with market profile. See, market profile is not only price distribution alone. It is also price combined with the price distribution always. Mm -hmm. So price action combined with price distribution. That is how we have to see market profile. So many people think only price distribution. So I'll not be able to get many uh, important information. What I can do as an intraday trader, what I can do as a positional trader, but a lot of meaningful ideas we can get. The only thing is like we have to start focusing very closely with the market profile. You'll be getting a lot of interesting nuances from there. So in simple words, how will we explain what is a price distribution, Rajan? So price distribution is like, let's say, I'll try to give a simple example over here. Right. What market does is like a uh, market never moves in a straight line. Market, you would have seen that market moves like this. Probably last Friday market had moved, price opened, and then it kept on going down till the end. But if you see almost 70% of the time, market rotates around the center point. So it, it, it goes up, comes back down, again goes up, comes back down, again goes back up. A particular level would have been kept on repeatedly touched multiple times. <clears throat> so there are days like every half an hour once, it would have been touching like 10 times in a day or mm -hmm. sometimes even 13 times in a day. The letter total A to L letter M. These are like total 13 letters in a day will get generated right from morning 9.15 to 3.30, letter A okay. to M. So a particular level will be repeatedly touched again and again and again. And that is what a process called price discovery. Because of mm -hmm. that reason, institutions, they do exist in the markets. So if in case, if you are really curious about what is a price discovery, you just search about NSE India price discovery. So because of the price discovery, institutions, they trade in every markets because they want to have a fair value for that day where they can do more business. So here, if you could see, I can count the number of TPOs. Each and every TPO, if I count horizontally, 
I'll be able to say like A, B, C, uh, and then G, I, J, K, L, and M. If I count the number of TPOs horizontally, I'll be able to see how many times a particular level got revisited. So if you could see like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost nine times, I'm able to see that the center point is repeatedly getting touched. So why so it is nine out of nine out of thirteen periods? Nine out of thirteen letters. Yes, nine yeah, out of thirteen so, letters. So yeah. imagine so, I'm an intraday trader. How this information could be useful? If I'm yeah. an intraday trader, I know that the market a particular level is likely to be revisiting. So I'll be looking for a place where market is likely to. That's what we call as a balancing, where market mm -hmm. will be like uh, keep on moving up and down around that region. So a center point will be formed and market will be keep moving like that. Or sometimes so it, it goes away and then it, it gives an opportunity to trade towards the center sometimes. Sometimes it goes deviated away from that and then it gives an opportunity to trade towards the center. This happens 70% of the time in the markets. So on such days, mean reversion strategies, if you fade extremes are very useful. Yes, uh, if you are a market profile trader, many times you may have to learn to trade mean reversion strategies, a trend reversal mm -hmm. strategy, because that is what it happens in the markets. And very right. few instances where you should also be able to see the strength because momentum is also something very important. A trader should not misjudge in uh, momentum because trying to trade against the momentum, even though it happens very little amount of time, the mm -hmm. damage will be very heavy if you start trading against the momentum. Right. So, so we'll come to that aspect of how to understand the momentum, but just just taking a few questions also over here because uh, so since Indian markets they run for six hour fifteen minutes, yes. Uh, why is it that thirty minutes is used like unlike other markets where the time is much longer the the markets are running. Why not 15 minutes or 25 minutes? Is there any sort yeah, of... That's the exact same question I also asked Jim Dalton when I met him because I also have okay. a I also experimented like 15 minute, uh, every 15 minute letters, I just started generating hourly uh, or daily, weekly profile. So for those people, uh, I'm going to explain what Jim Dalton had said to me. So Jim said like, uh, even if you go to change to the 15 minute time frame, mm -hmm. the structure will remain the same. So it's a oh. software information. You just, uh, let's say, like I'll just show you, uh, nothing is going to change. The structure still remains the same. Maybe you will get more granularity. But mm -hmm. what he said is like, uh, I don't want to see too more of information which creates analysis paralysis. I don't want too less of an information. I want an optimal information. That optimal information I'm able to find in the 30-minute time okay. frame. Otherwise, if I go to the indicators, let's say, I go and change instead of uh, 30 minutes, I just change it to 15 minutes or hourly. It doesn't matter. The structure will remain the same. Okay. The overall distribution will not change. Nothing will change. Point of control will remain the same. Value area will remain the same. Everything remains the same here. So, okay, in, in Bell TPO, it is different. So, you have to change the from 30 minute. I'm just changing to 15 minute. So, that yeah. every 15 minute, uh, the letters will get generated. So, different mm -hmm. softwares, they use different, different mechanisms. So if you could see that, even if it's a oh, trend yeah. over here, uh, structure remains the same. It's an elongated structure. Whereas mm -hmm. if you go back and see the other structures, you will get almost the distribution will be remains uh, the same thing. This is like distribution from 16th uh, July. July. Only right. thing is like you'll get a lot of letters, which is very right. difficult to interpret. Instead of you getting 13 letters, which is very easy to read. Now I should read 26 letters in a day, right? Okay. Which is very difficult. Rather, I would see a candlestick chart itself. Okay. So, yeah, whereas sure, here, sure, sure. yeah. So, whereas yeah. here I have a very limited structure, same structure, uh, but very uh, crisp information. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ajahn. Then uh, let's please go with the flow. We just went into an interesting question answer. So, please go with yeah, the flow. Yeah, so, uh, the TPOs are nothing but the letters. Uh, we call it as a time price opportunity. That's a basic foundation of uh, market profile, like how a human body is made up of cells. Uh, the market profile is made up of TPOs, a bunch of letters. Every day put together, it forms a price distribution. So ideally, there are two important concepts over here. One is point of control and value area. So the point of control is nothing but uh, the center point. It's not exactly necessarily a center point, but that is a point where more number of TPOs are getting traded at the center point. Maybe to understand this, I'll uh, try to show you a bunch of uh, distribution structures. So these are like re some recent distribution structures. You can see that almost, uh, this is from 15th July. You can see almost uh, 
nine letters i think here and then one day before i go you'll be able to see like again uh, some eight letters eight times every half an hour almost eight times the price got traded around that center point and then even before if you go even if it's a trending day you could see like uh, the market will be having a clean distributed structure with very wild fluctuations so here i'm seeing like seven tpo at the center point minimum seven tpo you'll be seeing uh, at least 75 to 80 percent of the time a minimum of 7 tpo you'll be able to see so only if the number of tpo is very lesser that is what it happens on last friday so if you last friday if you could see the structure there is not much of a distribution at all that's very rare day typically a strong trending day when bigger institutions are coming and selling long-term players big institutions like jp morgan goldman sachs or edelweiss kind of uh, big funds kotak mahindra kind of funds so when big mutual funds are coming and selling or big fis are coming and selling you might be seeing this elongated structure where you'll be seeing little balancing. So if you could see that, like mm -hmm. hardly like six TPOs is what I'm seeing. Six <laughs> TPOs, five TPOs, four TPOs. If you are seeing that kind of structure, that means that market, that particular day has been aggressively controlled by the long-term players, mm -hmm. right? So long-term okay. players also, uh, they uh, we can able to see from the profile structure whenever the profile is very much elongated. Uh, you can see the presence of long-term players. Otherwise, long-term players, they don't showcase themselves in the markets, right? So they are very conservative people. They don't want to express themselves on a daily basis. They On a daily basis, they'll be either slowly accumulating or slowly distributing. Maybe once in a month or twice in a month, you can see the presence of the long-term players. So that is why I don't track smart money from the long-term people. Because long-term people, they are very shy people. They don't uh, express themselves. They don't reveal themselves. They don't reveal their major intentions. There are many times you would have seen that recently, uh, one day before elections, uh, institutions like FIs, they are record short. And now they are flipping to record longs. The reason is they don't show their real intention. Long-term people always, they want to trap the traders before they want to make a main decisions. Right? So that's, that's a phenomenon which is there in, since the flow trading days. Now also it's been happening. Nothing has been changed. So, so how did players... you track uh, that? the players are record long now is it by structure or is it by looking at uh, the you data can, uh, you can also yeah. track from the couple of web portals there where you can go and track it like uh, one of the beautiful uh, visualization where i had seen recently is like uh, this web dot stockage so they have some very interesting visualization it's free to access like here you can see what retails are doing and what uh, institutions are trying to do in the markets. So if you could see that, that this is during elections, the orange one is the FIs. This okay. is an uh, index futures. Index futures, uh, they went record short mm -hmm. on the day of election. They even increased their shots also. But retail yeah. traders, uh, they increase their uh, longs. Uh, retails are exactly catching the bottom. Mm -hmm. but the problem is like uh, retail traders, they don't have the patience to hold on to their trades. They are not adding up to their winning trades. Instead, they start cutting down their trades. So as the price keeps mm -hmm. moving in, they start cutting down their positions. Mm -hmm. FIs are cutting down their positions on their losses. They are accumulating mm -hmm. losses. So they keep on cutting down their positions rapidly. That's a very good technique. And uh, as price keeps moving in, FIs are completely shifting to long and retails are somehow, they are having a lot of fear of heights. Probably their RSI might be getting into overbought. So maybe some bad news is there. Maybe fundamentally they might see like the Warren Buffett indicator. They might be looking into that. That is going above 100. Uh, people are talking about uh, the, the earnings and uh, other stuff is completely irrelevant to the markets. Markets are getting overheated. So somehow retails are uncomfortable with the heights. So mm -hmm. what is making them to do is like they are now retails are getting record shot and FIs has been kept in keep on increasing their longs. They keep on adding up to their longs. So that is one thing mm -hmm. what retail traders are missing here. They are, when say then they're seeing their profits, instead of they are adding to their winning games when there is a good opportunity is there. Rather, they are cutting down, they are, they are taking down their profits or they are booking out with small losses and they are getting out. That is what the major crowd is making a mistake. Otherwise, exactly on that date, FIAs went exactly wrong. Retail went exactly wrong. But uh, the institution game is not about right or wrong. How I can manage the game better? That's what an mm -hmm. institutional game is all about. They can take wrong decisions. Sometimes they purposefully take a wrong decision to trap the uh, uh, somebody because if they want to go along, right, somebody has mm -hmm. to go record short. Right. 
So it's kind of a psychological game. So let's not get in too deeper into that because Absolutely. it's their game, sure. not our game. Um, my point of view is like uh, it is very few places only you'll be able to spot long term money. But even if you are mm -hmm. able to spot a long term money, tomorrow's market is going to be completely irrelevant to what you're going to see from the long term money. That is one of the reasons why there is no point of tracking FI and DA data. You okay. can track it, but don't try to reflect the trades on the next day. Because tomorrow, there are many times FI kept on selling from January to May, but still many times market was hitting an all-time high. Even during right. elections also, FI has went record short. One day before election, we are at all-time high. right? So there is no point of tracking. My point here is, uh, sometimes yet is it, it works. But if you are a routine trader in the markets, or if you want to build a career in the markets, uh, maybe it's okay to watch the information, but don't try to reflect too much on those informations. It will create unwanted bias in the markets. But sure. where is the real smart money, if you ask me, from the traders, from the big traders? Uh, that is where the visual references will be very helpful. So, I'll, anyways, I'll sure. quickly, quickly move through that. Right. So, uh, point of control and uh, initial balance and value area. So, point of control is the place where we called as a fair value. That is where more institutions love to accumulate or distribute. Many pro traders also, they want to do more business. So FIs, they allow to do more business. DI, they allow to do more business. So they always look for a fair place where they can accumulate or distribute more amount of quantity. So the difference between uh, retail traders like us and the institution traders is like, uh, I might be willing to buy at one level or maybe at two levels or three levels, mm -hmm. two different levels. But... Uh, institutional trading will be present throughout the day, right? From the morning till the evening, they'll be keep on getting funds. So they'll be keep on getting uh, funds from their customers. SIP funds will be coming in. Uh, mutual fund, uh, uh, sometimes money will be coming in. If there is a crisis, there'll be a redemption pressure will be there. Throughout the day, it'll be coming in. And throughout the day, the dealer will be keep on buying their stocks. Uh, and right now, it has been almost uh, many of the institutional uh, activity has been, uh, as long as they keep on getting the money, the money will be kept on parking in the stocks so based on the what the fund manager is deciding on that day, the dealer will be keep on buying throughout the day. They don't have time to watch the technicals, <laughs> right? So right. Uh, long-term money, it keeps coming in. Every second will be keep coming in. But will they move the markets? If you ask me, they don't move the markets majority of the time unless there is some crisis, unless there is some big events uh, or some special situation. If there is some emergency situation, only then they will show their presence Otherwise, as I said, they are very conservative people. They don't showcase themselves. And many a times you try to follow the smart, uh, I mean, long-term money, particularly on the short side, you may end up getting trapped heavily. Mm -hmm. So that's the nature of the market itself. So the point of control is the place where you can see the those big guns will be accumulating or distributing. And then value area that represents 70% of the TPO with respect to the point of control. And initial balance is the first one hour of price action. So these are like kind of macro structures. And the mm -hmm. most important thing is the one of the important micro structure is the buying tail and selling tail. So the top of the tail is what we called as a selling tail. The top of the tail is what we called as a selling tail because that is where sellers, they control the markets aggressively selling at the top. They stop the auction and the auction tend to reverse. And the bottom of the tail, you can see a lot of single letters. We also call that as a single prints. So we call this as a single prints. So wherever you see only horizontally, if I able to see the structure, you're able to see only one single letter. Maybe I'll zoom and show you so that you can able to see it very clearly. So if you could see that, there is like only letter D is there if I measure horizontally. So here, if I measure, I'm able to see only one distribution over here. Here, if we could see three distributions here, if you could see at the center, I'm able to see almost 10 times of distribution over here. So where 10 times, that is where the point of control is coming in. Point of control and uh, the tail zones at the extremes is what we called as a buying tail at the bottom because price keeps on dropping down at D period. Price is able to pull back and it creates a lot of single prints that shows more aggressive it is, more aggressive the players are... Uh, controlling the markets. Many a times it involves smart money. I would say like 70% of the time it involves the presence of the smart money over here. It may be acting like an immediate support zone or immediate resistance zone. If it is happening mm -hmm. at the bottom, it could be acting like a support zone. If it is happening at the top, it could be acting like a major 
resistance zones one classical example is like i would like to spot from uh, uh, bank nifty i also written recently article some two days back also why that zone could be acting like a resistance so the tails we cannot just like that we cannot uh, ignore it so if you could see the tails something very interesting you can always note it down majority of the times your tail will be very small you can see the tails are very very small here sometimes the tail could be little lengthier but you see that other side the tails are always smaller small tails here also small tails the small tails at the top small tails at the bottom now this is what you'll be seeing 70% of the time 70% of the time you are not going to see the big tails at all sometimes it looks like market might be looking like crashing down at the opening so many people what they will do they try to go short in the markets but it'll create a lot of single print tails right it create a lot of single print tails then what happens is like market will pull back maybe at the b period end of the day if you would have seen there won't be any tails at all only very few cases few instances it creates a bigger tails mm -hmm. so one such day is where uh, the 12th of july it was creating one of the bigger tail so that's a big selling tail is a big selling tail over here and this tail zone you can see that many times the buyers are aggressively trying to enter into the markets buyers are trying to push the price but what they're getting is like they're getting a rejection so we are getting a rejection over here so price again getting back into that again we are seeing a rejection so third time also they are trying to enter into the zone they are trying to break this uh, zone so what we are seeing is like continuously we are seeing something called responsive sellers so mm -hmm. responsive sellers means buyers are putting an attempt but sellers are giving a counter attack is what they are trying to give so the the price is getting defended and uh, this is very important because you don't see this kind of tails very often maybe in a month maybe one or two times or maximum three times if you are seeing such kind of big tails that itself a big deal right so you, you don't get to see this on a day to day basis on a day to day basis as i said you will be seeing a very small tails most of the time and that itself are intraday nuances so if i were to see in a very layman terms that might mean that there is a enough buyers interest which is pushing the price and at the same time there are sellers who are waiting to immediately shut the selling down so yes this time so strong sellers so buyers are sellers. trying really hard but they are not able to get through that mm. but sellers are really stronger than the buyers here that's one of the reason so, why we get a strong tails we also call that as an excess from the market right. profile perspective so excess and for is, excess we should have at least two tpus right uh, even a small tails all tails are nothing but excess right, right so right, even right. the small tails here even here if you could see uh, it is like four tpus i'm seeing over here that is also mm -hmm. an excess only it's a good excess right. but mm -hmm. a strong excess is what it matters so right. here we don't have an excess at all that's why it becomes like a poor low or poor, poor high the, the, that is mm -hmm. lack of excess and uh, this is kind of a very strong excess where it, it shut down the complete activity. If you would have mm -hmm. seen the activity was like, if you would have seen the intraday activity, if you would have felt that the market was moving casually, C period went heavily and D period went heavily. So faster they went up and faster the shutdown happens. So here, that's what we call as a tempo here, fast. The fast price action where you are seeing, that is where you'll be able to spot a momentum traders where price yes. is moving literally faster mm -hmm. since the morning if you had tracked the intraday activity intraday activity was like it was keep on sleeping going something like that slightly bullish but suddenly the market wakes up and suddenly it picks up fast and even more it fast it went fast faster the price went up and faster the shutdown happens right so if you see the tempo here the tempo was slow on that day on 12th of july and then later on it picked up speed so the speed is where uh, the momentum traders, they love to play. But unfortunately, majority of the time, the momentum traders, they get trapped in the market. Very few instances, probably I would say like 25 to 30 percent, they succeed. But momentum traders, uh, many a times they get trapped at such kind of locations. So one such kind of location, some strong seller presence has been witnessed. End of the day, we would have seen that, that strong tails has been left in the markets. So that right. can be a positional information for you going forward. So that zone, if at all prices again coming into that zone, it could be a very, very strong zone because the strong seller who entered over here, they might try to defend that zone. As long as it is not getting crossed, these traders will be coming and continuously keep on uh, defending such kind of zones. So these are like kind this, of a very micro informations. 
So this type of information is very useful for sell option sellers. Like they can sell a it strike can be above this. For option buyers, it can be useful for option sellers, positional mm -hmm. traders, intraday traders. So different different information has different different uh, meaning. Some informations are useful for intraday traders. Some informations are useful for positional option buyers. Some uh, information could be useful for option sellers also, right? So particularly directional traders, they can make mm -hmm. benefit out of this. Absolutely. It doesn't matter whether they are option buyers or option sellers. Very interesting. So uh, how uh, we can, well, I mean, what we can do with market profile is like, I generally separate market profile and uh, market profile into two categories, macro structures and micro structures. So Jim called this as like visual nuances. That's what Jim call, call this. But over a period of time, I also accumulated my own learnings. So I have my own way of classification. Even though my core principles are based upon Jim Dalton, I also derived my own way of uh, observing the markets. So I classify the markets into macro structures and micro structures. Macro structures are like profile structure, short term references, which is mostly useful from a positional point of view. Whereas micro structures and visual references and intraday nuances, mostly if I'm a trader, intraday trader, or I want to hold the position for one or two days or three days. So those kind of short term information I want, I want immediate resistance. I want immediate supports on that kind of things. Uh, th that's what I'm saying. Like the smart money in my time frame, in my time frame, where I see this level as a support for the next two days or three days, because I'm a trader, I'm not an investor, right? So I'm not going to hold mm -hmm. my position for like one month or two months or three months. So majority of the traders who are trading in f and in futures and options, their holding period is like hardly one or, one or two days or three days or four days. So they'll be looking for a very quick short-term information. They want price to move in their favor. That's what every trader's intention is. So that is why I shifted my focus of smart money not to track the long-term investors because as I said, long-term investors, they don't showcase themselves. They are very, really smart in hiding their information. Very difficult to spot uh, from the publicly available information. But there are places where uh, you can sense the presence of the uh, smart money from the short-term traders. There are some short-term traders. Uh, short-term traders means they can be big traders, ultra HNI funds, prop trading desk, family offices. They are also smart money. They are also doing business. They're, the business is like, uh, uh, they're doing business for decades, right? Maybe you and me here for like uh, five years, 10 years. They are there for decades. Their family as their business, they are doing it. Primarily in Mumbai and Gujarat, many people's family business itself, uh, they are into trading, right? So those are the people I'm talking about. Those who can, are those who have the muscle power to move the markets intraday, but still it is very easy to track them using market profile. So some of the examples okay. I'll try to spot. So before that, we'll get some very basics on macro structures. So this is one of the simple macro structure. We call this normal distribution. So distribution looks like a traditional bell curve. Whereas this is normal variation day where one side distribution happens, other side will, will be seeing a skew. So a traditional normal distribution will be looking like this in a traditional bell curve shape curve. Whereas in a normal variation day, one side skew will be there, other side will be seeing a distribution. So that is how the normal variation day will be looking like. So it means morning it, it balances and second half it builds momentum and it keeps going in one direction. So that is normal variation day. Normal day could be like, uh, we have a center point, price keep on oscillating around the center point. That is normal distribution day. It provides and uh, still it trends, it, it has a trending structure. So something like price moves up, goes sideways, and it keeps going up. So that is normal day. Still, it develops a structure in the center point. A lot of time price touches. So mostly price action will be in the first half an hour. In the last half an hour, you can see that. Still, price will be trendier. But it creates mid of the day, mostly sideways. And then we have uh, another interesting structure called uh, neutral day. So neutral day is like kind of a doji kind of structure where price will be at trading around the center point but it will be chopping around the traders heavily. So it goes up, fails, goes down, fails, and comes back and closes in the center. That's what we call as a neutral day center. Most likely indecision from the trade uh, people. And then we have uh, another three set of activity here. So this is like a uh, long-term traders activity. As I said, very few cases, very few instances you'll be able to track a long-term activity. A trend day, cleanly, the long-term players are taking control of the market. As I said, they don't take control of the markets. They trade, uh, slowly accumulate, slowly distribute. 
but one of the day you're seeing like uh, long term players they might have some information that we don't have or sometimes they even act on the public information as well like election day budget days so these are the days uh, the 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 volumes will be extraordinary and you'll be seeing huge volume activity volume activity will be heavy from long term players volume activity will be heavy from pro trader pro traders short term traders intraday traders everybody will be doing their volume left and right center they'll be doing their volume but long term players they move the markets rest of the people they have to follow if they fail to follow the damage will be heavy on such kind of days this is where you'll be seeing like entire sectors will be moving in the same direction whenever you're seeing that entire sector is moving in the same direction nifty is up by 1% or 2% almost all the other sectors are green every other sectors are green except india vix so those are the days you are seeing strong money flow is coming from the long term when money is flowing heavily from the long term people it will be flowing across the sectors it not be going into one particular instrument it will be flowing it will be flooding across all the sectors right likewise on the downside also and the other one is like double distribution day here also there some sudden sort of news happens during mid of the day suddenly a balancing market breaks up and then it started balancing at the top it creates a single print in between the structure right you can see that usually single print you'll be able to find at the tails but here you can right. see the single print at the midpoint so usually again a sign of some long term activity <clears throat> but i'll repeatedly i'll say again uh, if you track the wrong long term activity tomorrow also will it follow if you ask me not necessarily some cases no. it follow many cases it never followed at all so tracking the long term alone it doesn't makes big difference for a, if you are a trader it doesn't makes a difference maybe if you are investor maybe you might find it interesting but as a trader i never got uh, excited because of long term activity yes long term activity if you are trading in that direction you may end up making a big money but will it continue tomorrow also not necessarily right so today okay. they might dominate tomorrow they may not dominate tomorrow uh, somebody else will take control of the market again long term will go quiet and that is what they do majority of the time right so if you are spotting sure. today long term doesn't means like tomorrow also the long term has to follow that you once you start observing you will get to that point initially it will be very exciting to see long term activity but over a period of time short term players is where you should start tracking because that is where the intelligence is there 75% of the time and you also able to spot the weaker hands 25% of the time using market profile so that is with macro structures but when it comes to visual structures micro visual structures there are many mm -hmm. places where you'll be able to see the presence of smart money and dumb money because they play something called exactness exactly around previous day high previous day low multi day high multi day low poor highs poor lows prominent point of control single print zones buying and selling tails rally high pull back lows gaps early morning high early morning low intra bar weaker high weaker low day previous day high half back and intra bar half back today is open yesterday settlement close midday point of control so you now you can see that there are a lot of informations are there like it's amazing of... that so much so much of micro visual structures can provide us so much of information it will be good to see on charts how we identify this yeah, unfortunately right nobody sure. had documented yet uh, i hear that jim dalton is writing a book on visual reference levels wow maybe i think that could be uh, his upcoming book i'm not sure whether when it will be released i think i heard in one of his session he said like he'll be releasing a book on visual reference levels okay. because most of the most of his learning are right now in his videos but it right. never translated in book and uh, we have a very unless only jim dalton is the only one who is talking about visual reference level you cannot find anywhere in the books or textbooks only you can find in his videos you can see most of the times so mm -hmm. that is those are my core inspiration to uh, took the learnings and then uh, i developed my own uh, style of skills and then uh, uh, so Absolutely. some of the some of them will will talk about that so sure, nothing sure. but derivative mm -hmm. works of on top of the what jim dalton had done which is already there in the publicly available information it's not something i had invented new but uh, there are some places yes i also had my own style of observation so where i classify which is smart money which is uh, strong money based upon my last uh, Uh, almost last 12 13 years i've been observing market profile so based on that i have some certain set of ideas what i consider that as a smart money what i consider that as a weaker hands so so let's see this visual structures on yeah absolutely please. yeah so first thing first uh, when you are want to understand the visual structure you have to consider using something called optimal tpo size 
So that is one of the biggest drawback where you cannot use the web-based tools. Recently, there are uh, go charting and uh, uh, trading view provides ma market profile kind of tools. Uh, even in AmiBroker, we have market profile kind of tools. The problem is like, uh, it is not optimal. You, you cannot run an optimal TPOs where you need a smaller TPO size, not too smaller, not too bigger. But in trading view or go charting kind of platforms, uh, the problem is like, uh, I have to use uh, bigger TPOs. It's very difficult to uh, reduce the TPO size. So I finally got settled down to Ninja Trader, right? So I've been using Ninja Trader since 2015 onwards. So since then, I've been using uh, microstructures only. Earlier, I used to have, uh, when I started, I have market delta, but somehow market delta got into litigation with their parent company, like in Investor RT, uh, Linsoft. Uh, so I have to migrate to, the market delta shut down, and then uh, I have to move to Ninja Trader. So since then, I've been using Ninja Trader since 2015 onwards. Otherwise, previously, I used to have market delta. And uh, talking about micro structures, so you have to have an optimal TPO size, something like Nifty. Uh, I'll be using like uh, this price band of Nifty comes around like two point TPO. So every two mm -hmm. points, I'll be plotting the letters. Something like Bank Nifty, I'll be using like every five points, I'll be able to plot the letters, which is very difficult to plot in platforms like TradingView or Go Charting. Maybe you may be forced to use for Nifty itself, you may forced to use like five or ten, where you might be missing the micro nuances. So I'll tell you why right. it is. Maybe for the first example, we'll go through that. See, the investors, right? They never care about exactness. Only traders play the exactness. And many traders' stop loss will be like a day high or plus five points, day low plus uh, seven points. So when yesterday's low got broken down, many traders will get active. That will be the confirmation point for many traders. Many momentum traders, they try to enter in the markets. So always, right, investors, they don't watch yesterday's high and yesterday's low. They don't even care about that. They don't, I even doubt whether they will care about like last four day high or last five day high. I don't think even they care about last week high or not. Investors, they watch a completely different reference. They watch like 200 day moving average, maybe uh, some bigger information like all time highs, all time lows, multi year high, multi year low. When, when, a, when a market is hitting an all time high, right, you can see that the most of the rejoice will be coming from the investors. Investors will be expressing mm -hmm. their. Uh, excitement and when market is hitting an all-time low investors will be showing their despair right but for traders it doesn't matter even if a market is hitting an all-time high it doesn't matter for traders focus on very short-term references what investors are watching what traders are watching is completely two parallel worlds right so they don't mix each other when uh, talking about uh, micro structures right so i classify based upon this visual structure i classify traders into dominant traders they are the one actual smart money and momentum traders, they have a particular habit of chasing the price action, but many times they end up getting into a trap. But sometimes 30% of the times they are smarter, but 70% of the time they end up getting into a trap. So that is why you have to track where the dominant traders activity is happening, where the momentum traders activity is happening. Very few instances only you can go and trade in the direction of the momentum traders, particularly when strong trends are evolving. You know that it is going to be a strong trend. And you do see momentum trader, you have to learn to chase the breakouts. But majority of the time, we have to, uh, the where the momentum traders are entering, at times it could be a trap. And then we have weaker hand traders. So mostly they're emotional traders. Uh, they Their trading location is mostly at a very uh, last moment. They come to the party and then they'll join it. So we call them as mm -hmm. laggards. And many a times they get into a trap because of their emotional decisions in the markets. And via market profile, yes, we can be able to classify where the weaker hands are, where the dominant traders are, where the momentum traders are. By looking itself, we'll be able to classify. So why visual structures are useful, I'll tell you. So Because visual structures, they do carry memory. It has a memory point. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to give some examples later on. It helps traders to position intraday as well as uh, positional trade setups. It helps them to decide. And helps traders in identify immediate resistance, immediate support zone. So think about it. I'm not talking about long-term support or long-term resistance. I'm talking about the support for next two days, the resistance for next two, three days, or maybe resistance for next five days, support for next 10 days. So I'm talking in terms of days. I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking about uh, this could be the uh, resistance for next one month or five months. I'm not talking about that. That is like investor time frame. One investor sure. should have to take care about those things. 
as a trader i should look for immediate resistance immediate support zones so that is where we'll be able to spot from the uh, uh, profile structure the best example is like last friday's nifty future example so maybe i'll uh, instead of showing here i'll show directly in the chart itself you'll get a feel what exactly a visual reference level is all about and why it is so important so this is like uh, what the picture what you're seeing here is the last friday's activity market heavily went down and uh, thursday activity market went heavily up so if you ask mm -hmm. me where the visual reference levels are i have to zoom to the charts to the core I'll just scroll up, right? You can see that. Yeah. So this is like last Friday mm -hmm. high, this 18th, uh, sorry, 19th July high. And this is like 18th July high. If I try to draw a line here, so I'm just simply drawing a horizontal line here. That's what we call as a references. Every reference carry different importance. So this reference is something very interesting. Maybe by looking itself, you know that what really happened Maybe I'll write and narrate for the people who are first timers to the market profile. This is my previous day high, Thursday high, basically Thursday high. Now market open at the bottom straight to the point. It comes exactly to the yesterday's high mm -hmm. after it was, the action was pretty much faster, faster. They come up faster. They go down. Right. So some sort of strong money presence has been there and their presence has been very much exactly visual to a TPOs, exactly to a TPO last Friday, high TPO and uh, Thursday, high TPO are exactly same. Sometimes exactly same one TPO above or below. Still, we call that as an exactness. So even if it goes one TPO above also, still we'll call that as an exactness. Now, whenever you are seeing like fast up move followed by a fast down move, that is where the dominant sellers, they will take control of the markets, dominant sellers. So when you're seeing this itself, it's an indication that it is a intraday opportunity as well as a positional opportunity. They are creating an immediate resistance intraday. Also, they're creating an immediate resistance. Maybe they might be creating a resistance positionally also so that they are creating some sort of a immediate resistance. So but who is initiating here? They are not traders. They are not investors. They're not some big investors. Ideally, they are traders because traders are the one they visually, they take exact trades. They come, somebody is coming and exactly stopping the trade exactly at the previous day high, right? So at a TPO level, maybe if you watch at a candlestick level, maybe this could be like a, a two, four, maybe eight, four, one. And maybe this could be like a two, four, eight, or 2.5 something right. so there'll be some marginal difference will be there but if you see at the tpo level that exactness you can feel it and intraday itself will be able to sense that is yes, some sort of dominant trading activity is happening maybe maybe that is what i'm saying like more you're having an experience uh morning itself you know that first half now you know that that this looks like an, uh, some sort of a dominant activity faster the price will rise and faster the drop is happening so that observation is what it classifies you as a professional trader. Uh, that is why it tells them, hey, boss, this is looking like a dominant trading activity. And maybe I think we should be uh, shorting the markets intraday as well as positional as well. So, so something just like that. Uh, one thing over here, uh, perhaps poor high, which is lack of excess, is also an indication that the sellers were active on the previous day, Rajendra? Yes, I, I'll, I'll come to that point. That is what I'm sure, going to sure. talk about next. Okay. So this is one visual nuances. Uh, likewise, there will be multiple visual nuances you'll be able to understand. So maybe I'll show you the second uh, interesting one. So this is like a poor high at an all time high. This is a structure that you can see from Reliance. So I, I show the, the actual Reliance chart itself here. I'll show you how visual it is and why traders, smart traders are taking control of the markets, not investors. Remember, as I said, uh, investors, you don't see the uh, their smartness on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't show their smartness. On a daily basis, investors not necessarily have to show their smartness because every day they get money. Why they have to be smart every day, right? So, But there are certain places they know where to be smarter. They might lose small, small battles, but when they are winning, they'll be winning a bigger battle. Uh, I think probably you would have seen that there is a movie called Enigma. Uh, they do the exact same thing there. So even though they decode the uh, enemy's uh, uh, encoding tactics, right? So they 
still they lose small battles but they still right. win the bigger battles over here so if in case we haven't seen the enigma movie just go and watch it uh, fantastic this is the but... one in which german coding they, yes, they yes. broke the yes. right. the machine name is called uh, the, the enigma. coding uh, is called uh, enigma right so this is with uh, nifty i'll go to reliance so reliance you can see like this is like kind of a poor high poor high is nothing but lack of excess if you could see here whenever i'm seeing lack of tails right lack of tails i call this as a poor high so there is no tail over here or maybe i'll be getting only one tpo at the tails so maybe uh, for this kind of structure right here i'm using two point tpo two point tpo every letter is two point bricks over here maybe if you are using like five point tpo 10 point tpo every day will be looking like a poor high poor lows because tails are normally smaller but here i'm talking at a precision of 2 point tpo precision i'm talking about over here the g period high and h period high are at 2 tpo difference so that minute information is what i call as a micro information that says this is happening at an all time high a poor high happening is something very casual poor high happens generally next day itself what happens is like it will get cleared but if it is not getting cleared that is what it happening same day it haven't cleared next day on 9th july this is 9th july 9th july also it failed to clear so the next day if it failed to clear this level it becomes like a positional resistance to me i call this as a dominant selling so same day i will not call it but uh, uh, i'll take an stance one day later i'll call this as a dominant seller or uh, we can say like immediate resistance so we we call this like dominant seller and it, again you can see like there is one more poor high you are getting over here so there is lack of excess no tails over here and uh, next day again it failed to clear there has been an attempt but attempt has been failed so 12th july we, again i'm going to upgrade to another dominant seller so one more dominant sellers are taking control over here initially i have a resistance one immediate resistance now my immediate resistance is shifting from here to my second resistance this is going to be my immediate resistance right so it creates series of resistance at times maybe if you had watched recently for the stocks like hdfc bank you can appreciate what i'm trying to say here but these are the uh, i i carry forward these levels they are not my targets but they are my immediate resistance so i use this as an immediate resistance right so since then uh, it gives an opportunity a very good trade location to sh short the markets positionally something like that so and, and moreover whenever a poor high is happening at an all time high we call that as a kind of a situation uh, called as inventory getting long to too long kind of an overheated situation from the short term community so we we call the situation as like inventory goes long to too long long to too long I mean, the, and you have a very nice article on market calls about uh, inventory long to too long and yes, the park yes. effect yes so whatever i uh, i have any thought process i used to write and blog about it i've been doing this since 2006 onwards so right. market profile also i had to some extent i had whatever comes to my mind i had shared my experience in my blog right. so maybe for the beginners uh, they may have to uh, learn more context right so that's what i'm saying like there are a lot of nuances are there it, it cannot be compressed in a day one or two so that is why you need to have some continuous practice over there so this is with uh, reliance and that is how the price got stopped generally poor high happening at an all time high is super rare but a poor high coming and the next day it is not clearing that's a dangerous information for the short term players who are holding longs those who are holding long they should consider exiting their position they they might plan for a re entry maybe are those who want to short it's a perfect location to short because now you have a clear cut resistance coming in and over a period of time you are seeing more and more information that your resistance also keep keep on getting upgraded you are seeing more and more weaker buyers are coming and trading in the markets more dominant sellers the big guys the big traders are coming and defending their positions in the markets right that is this is one classical example another classical example is from hdfc bank you can see like series of poor highs you can see so this is from poor high and next day it never cleared and it becomes like a resistance so we had a poor high here we had a poor high so ph 
same day i will not confirm that as a smart money or smart money selling next day i need one more day to confirm next day it failed to clear so this becomes my resistance mm -hmm. and then uh, so here you can see that there is a poor high next day it got cleared so that is nothing to me so it, i just have to cross that information uh, it doesn't make any sense to me so poor high comes many places it clears so that is the nature of the market itself but here if you could see there is another poor high next day it failed to clear so my r1 is now upgrading to r2 here Nice. And again, my R2 is getting upgraded to R3 over here because last Friday also price started getting back down. So uh, my, my, I'm, I'm able to trail my uh, resistance. So mm -hmm. now uh, I don't consider this as a major resistance. I don't consider this as a major resistance. This is my immediate resistance over here. Mm -hmm. right? And also the results are not very good. So it will be interesting how SDFC opens on Monday. It doesn't matter. We don't focus on what is the result. There are many instances... Mm -hmm. A result came really bad and market went higher. <laughs> there are many instances yeah. like one of the day, uh, Bharat Forge, I think they said like uh, uh, 96 percentage they had uh, the profit got eroded, but still that particular day, uh, the stock went like 16 percentage or 14 percentage. This is somewhere in 2017, I believe, 2017 or 14, somewhere in that time, where they given a positive guidance, but their revenue wise, it like complete disaster, but uh, they given some hope to the investors. So investors taken it very seriously. They done some value investment on that particular day. So it, it's very difficult uh, to read. Uh, yes, of course, there are many places wherever it is going to be like surprising results. Definitely market will have a trending direction. But many instances uh, trying to decode a fundamental information on a day to day basis. I doubt a trader should not do that. Maybe investors should do that. A trader should not do that at all. Right, so a trader should focus more on the short-term information. A trader should definitely aware about the information, but they should not mm -hmm. reflect whether the particular news is bullish or bearish. Right, so okay. what is more important is like once the news is released, so what kind of traders are coming and competing? That is what it is very important. Or before the news, what kind of traders are coming and competing? Uh, that is what it is primarily important from a trading perspective. Trying to decode a news. And they're trying to expect because of that news only market will uh, would have been went up means uh, after the election that day we had a five percent crash. FIS has been record short. Nobody would have been anticipated like next week we'd be hitting an all time high. So within a week or two weeks we are at all time high back again, right? So market changes very faster. So as mm -hmm. a trader we should learn to adjust our sales. Market goes up. Absolutely. We we have to learn to trade the upside direction. Goes down. We have to trade the downside direction. Sometimes within the same day itself, market will be keep on moving up and down the same day multiple times. So you should have the mental flexibility to shift your sales. Within a day itself, you may have to shift multiple times. Very difficult, but uh, uh, Absolutely. that is what that is where the challenge is all about, right? That is so why... On poor high, there is an interesting question also that there are multiple highs uh, and they are becoming more and more visual. At what information change will you start to consider this resistance as potential targets? Um, see, there are certain information. Poor highs are never my targets in many instances. Okay. But there are certain places like the one which happened in Nifty. It's only it's creating a temporary top, but it's not a major top. So something like Nifty, it's a it's a uh, is it a smart money? If you ask me, yes, it is a smart money. Uh, that smart money, right, they can bring down the price action maybe uh, another two days or three days also they can go down. Sometimes they can go down like for uh, 10 days also. But no matter what, they always pull back. We don't know how, when they pull back, we don't know immediately. We cannot comment on that. But when the market is uh, started moving down, some places traders will get into a trap. Some places traders may get into, market may get into sometimes overheated emotions. So different time market does something different, but always there is some underlying pattern will be associated with that. We'll be able to judge where the market is getting uh, weaker. So maybe I'll, I'll try to show some lively examples where last time there was a trap has been set for the sellers. So sellers market has been last two months, right? It's been keep going bad. So I'll go to the markets here. So there are various ways a trap can be set in the markets. In fact, I have some some seven to eight classifications how a trap could be set in the markets. So this is one thing called liquidation breakout failure. Uh, it's more of a positional trap. 
So if you could see that particular day's structure here, It's, it's not from market profile perspective, but just a simple price action. Even if you track the market profile also, you, you might get a similar feeling. So price has been slowly moving up, right? So one of the day, right, what happened is like a strong uh, volume, strong uh, downside move. Generally, strong volume means big sellers. That is what majority of the people think. A strong volume also, many times it indicates some profit booking. That's it, right? So many instances in a strong bull markets, Suddenly, a market is crashing means it is majority of the time, if you look into the pro uh, profile structure, profile structure doesn't indicate it's not much of a serious selling. It says like kind of a trapped activity. So many sellers, as I said, many people uh, watch this swing low, right? So whoever watched that swing low, when the price goes down, uh, they are not able to con con control their shots. They, kept in, they get flowing their shots. Even if the price rises, the retail traders find it very attractive to short more and more, right? So that is how they fall prey to that information. But this is kind of a trap, I would say that. So this is kind of a liquidation breakout failure. This liquidation is nothing but a simple profit booking. Profit booking. <clears throat> how do I know that if you ask me? <laughs> uh, I've been watching every day, almost every day, I've been watching Nifty and Bank Nifty. So I've been classifying this kind of simple patterns. So why such kind of big volumes are happening? Uh, I do have observation on order flow as well. Uh, how exactly the volume went on that particular day. So I have, I, I do watch during the live market hours while I'm trading, right? So market profile and order flow. So those are the places when there is a strong profit booking is happening. Generally, uh, once profit booking is happening, inventory goes to neutral. Sometimes inventory goes extreme, overheated markets. It got little cool down, but very quickly it will start getting back up. That is mm -hmm. how the inventories are in a strong bull markets. Strong bull markets, what market will do is like uh, they will keep going up. Sudden crashes, many weaker hands, they will come and short the markets. Uh, but very quickly, they'll get back up. And the strong corrections again, they'll keep moving up slowly. And then uh, once the market makes a top, major top, major inventory getting long to too long. And then that is where you'll start seeing major mm -hmm. corrections where other internals, market internals are also showing a lot of weakness. Open interest, you may get some clues there. So a lot of other information says like market profile indicates some sort of top patterns, inventory getting long to too long. Many things will be coming in sync. That is where the major top is. So right okay. now in Nifty, if you ask me, is it a major top? If you ask me, it is going to be a temporary correction. Maybe this temporary correction maybe can continue for two days or maybe till budget. <clears throat> I, I don't know. But uh, whenever uh, the things are changing, one thing I can tell you that it is not a major top. Uh, we'll be hitting an all-time high. But smart money is coming and selling. They are just temporary sellers. They will sell. At some point in time, they will book profit. They will move away. Even they will switch to long also sometimes. That is what short-term players, they play. They always change their opinions very frequently. But right now, they are shorting. Means we also uh, have to go in their similar direction. We don't know how long they will be moving. They could be moving for next two days, next five days. But they are very short-term traders. At some point in time, uh, when situation is getting overheated or more and more weaker hands are coming and selling, market might reverse. When it reverses, this kind of exact visual reference level, which I see this as a memory, market keeps a memory around that level, market will again come back to the same level maybe uh, this week or maybe this, I mean, uh, I don't know whether this week will happen or not. Maybe next uh, month or maybe next week. Somewhere around that time, uh, this level, you can see like market will be hitting one more all-time high. So it, it, it's not a major top. That I can tell you that. From my experience. Very interesting. Well, budget is on Tuesday, so there would be activity around and following that. Yes. Yeah. And likewise, there is an another smart money, like A, B, poor, low. You can see that it's the letter which is made because of letter A and B, which is also a poor, low. So here there was a poor low. Next day it is getting cleared. Uh, nothing serious over there. There's also a small poor low here. Poor low and poor low. Double weaker lows. It's also a poor low. This is a special poor low where letter A and B, it can go up to two DPO difference. Right? So this is a special poor low. We call that as an AB poor low. An AB poor mm -hmm. low, if it is happening and it's next day it is not getting cleared in many instances. Not every case because different ways, different places, we treat AB poor low as differently. But this one place markets uh it, it's creating in short term immediate support zone it is getting created one of the good location to look for a 
positional long trading yeah. opportunity with this ab power law as an important support zone so this, so this again in... you will take a call on the following day not the same next day, next day. not the see. same day not the same right. day next day maybe sometimes you will be getting a, a feel in the morning itself morning mm -hmm. itself price will be hitting in uh, yesterday's high so uh, the chances of price again coming and testing the next day same day low is very lesser because not every other day is going to be an outside day so morning itself sometimes you get a clue yes the chances are reducing uh, sometimes you may have to wait till uh, mid of the day sometimes you may have to wait till uh, 3 15 next day 3 20 okay. sometimes and then you can take a decision so still you are seeing that the poor low is not cleared poor high is not cleared then uh, majority of the time it confirms that it's going to be a strong uh, uh, support zone or strong resistance zones Along just with that, we following also... up here, yeah. Uh, just following up here, we have a poor low, let's say, and we also have, let's say, a good excess on the bottom. Which of between these two cases, which will give you a more confidence about the upward uh, trade, if you want to take? See, we always have to learn to see the information as a collective information. So if you could okay. see here, right, uh, I can see this as an. Uh, so this letter A and letter F, it is only one TPO difference. So here I'm right. talking about 50 paise TPO. The difference between each and every letter is like a 50 paise. Mm -hmm. so this is like kind of a smart money. That is that itself a smart money. It's creating a support zone, which is getting confirmed on the 5th of July itself. And there is also an AB poor low, which says like the, the, the opportunity could be even more bigger. So here it says okay. like there is an opportunity. But uh, the 5th of July, the information, AB poor low, generally in a sideways market, you are seeing an AB poor low and that market AB poor low is not getting cleared next day, right? So uh, next day, it, it generally it clears, but if it is not getting cleared, you know that the, the, the opportunity could be slightly bigger. It could be a slightly a bigger positional opportunity, right? So uh, one thing you have to understand that not every opportunity is equal. There are certain very few instances only in market profile, you'll be able to see bigger opportunities. Majority of them, uh, it will point to the micro visual information. And that's not the same thing here. If you could see the structure here again, I can spot like how crowded the traders are getting played over here. So notice this mm -hmm. 10th July low and uh, 11th July low. How precisely, uh, yeah. maybe I'll try to explain this with a diagram so that you'll get a fair idea what I'm trying to exactly talk over here. So that is one of the day we are having a low. Right. So what is happening here is like price action perspective. Price is coming and going just one exactly D period. Exactly coming to the 10th July low. Mm -hmm. This is 10th July low. And then uh, price going up. Again, it went down only one TPO lower. That is E period. Again, buyers are pushing up. Again, at F period, it went one TPO down. Again, pushing up. Again, G period exactly coming and defending. So multiple times a level is getting defended exactly at the same place. And it is also creating not only a uh, poor low, but it is also a dominant reference it is creating and price is moving to the opposite side. So these are like very powerful support zones, a super powerful support zone. Uh, maybe this could be targets later on, but immediately if you speak, whether it's an uh, weaker hands or not, definitely these are like signatures of stronger hands. Right. So if you see this kind of tiny informations, uh, definitely over a period of time, you'll be able to recognize uh, it requires a practice. Maybe I would say like if you're practicing three months, absolutely, definitely absolutely. you come to one shape, one form of understanding, but more the experience you're going to have uh, better your clarity in thinking will emerge over a period of time. So only thing is like, you should not, if you're a learner, you should not look for a short term gains. You should look mm -hmm. for a long term learnings. Over a period of time only, you will be able to grab this concept because this is something completely completely different. So where we are talking about the real uh, smart money, real uh, uh, traps, how the traps are repeatedly set in the markets, repeated patterns you're going to see. Every other day, market will be doing something different. But within mm -hmm. that something different, market will be doing something visual always, majority of the times. Right? So that you're going to see that. So and, in market uh, profile synthesis of the market generated information is very important. Yeah. How what make what sense you make out of all the information which is coming yeah. is very contextual and depending yes. on the context of the market actually. Yes. So using these tiny nuances only will be able to understand the context, underlying <clears> sentiment, <throat> who is driving smarter, who is weaker, if it is weaker, where they are keeping their stop loss, right? So where they are getting trapped, if it is a weaker hands, why how do I visually say that? These guys are traps. So by looking in, into the market profile itself, 
how I can say that these are traps. These are stronger money. These are long-term money. These are smart money. These are like momentum traders. They may end right. up getting trapped. So these are momentum traders. They are going strong by looking into the structure. So it's always not only visual structure alone. Visual structure combined with macro structures uh, uh, definitely will give you a broader idea about how to trade any kind of market situation and any kind of trading instrument. It could be Nifty, Bank Nifty today. Tomorrow it could be HDFC Bank, ICC Bank, Reliance or something like that. Or even tomorrow it could be gold, crude, US markets, US markets, Australian markets. It could be any markets. The thing here is, even if you go there in gold, or even if you gold, if you go and see in US market, even uh, compared to Indian markets, even mar US market is even more visual. Right. Uh, which you can see it in most of its Jim Dalton's videos, how visual it is. So I try to explain from my point of view, you just go and watch Jim Dalton's video. You will get ample amount of ideas uh, how visual the markets are, how visual traders they take. Uh, Actually, decisions. I had a question here, Rajendran, because I trade ES now. And what I have seen is, for example, ES has a range of 50 to 80 points. And they have a four point, means one point is four ticks. So yes. in a way, they have a range of not more than 200 to 300 ticks in a day. Yes. Whereas Bank Nifty, which trades 500 points, it has a tick of 0 0.05. Yes. So in in a sense, Bank Nifty is trading 10,000 ticks in a day. So yes. means still market goes I, visual. You want to show exactly, exactly, exactly. That's the point that market goes visual despite means from 300 ticks in ES to 10,000 ticks in Bank Nifty, and still we are able to generate very meaningful information. That's amazing. So maybe I'll show you last Friday what happened. This is called as uh, uh, early morning high, early morning low. It's not a Jim Dalton's concept, but uh, I very frequently observe the first half an hour high, that is letter A period high and letter A period low is what I called as an early morning high because it happens when the market just started. It's an early morning high and early morning low to me. <laughs> I just marked down the last Friday early morning high. This is letter A period high. I call this an early morning high. And this is like early morning low. This is within the day I'm showing you. So it's not just only at the major highs and major lows. Within the highs and lows also, you'll be able to find many visual nuances. So this is, I just marked over here. Now, if you could see that the letter A and D period, the difference is like only one TPO over here. So there you can see visual information. And you can also see that uh, the letter E, F, G, H, I, and J, there is something very interesting which is happening over here. Notice that this is E period. E and F, one TPO difference. F and G, right. one TPO difference. G and I, one TPO difference. G and J, one TPO difference. So more crowded selling is what it is happening in this location, right? So multiple times the selling is happening. It's a kind of an area of importance. Maybe one or two yeah. days we can... Uh, carry forward this information. These are like very tiny nuances where it is happening at a five point difference. So since right. you are seeing like last Friday, Nifty was, Bank Nifty was able to move like 510 points from the high to low. The mm -hmm. high to low range was like 510 points. Sometimes it could be even 1000, 1500 points also, but market never failed to show this kind of surprising nuances from the market profile. The only thing is like you should learn to observe the market profile very closely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very interesting. Please go ahead. <clears throat> and uh, uh, exactly how this kind of information could be useful, I'll tell you. Uh, that is what exactly happened on uh, Thursday in Nifty also. So if you could go and see the Thursday's Nifty profile, this is Thursday, right? So Thursday, what you would have seen is like market went one-sided, but still, if you would have seen the early morning high, which is the early, letter A period high. So maybe for the beginners, I'll just zoom even more and then I'll show you. This is letter A period high. Let me split the profile structure so that you'll get a fair idea. I'm just splitting the profile here. And I'm also circling the letter A period high. This is early morning high, which is nothing but letter A period high. And look at that G period. So G period went only one TPO into the early morning high and it started going up. From there, it's heavily it started going up. Now, these kind of nuances uh, usually returns back. This has a very short term memory. Usually the 70% of the time, the very next day, it comes back and clears the reference. Means it comes back and touches that reference exactly. Uh, the, this odds are like 70 percentage, something like that. You, you can see this kind of nuances very repeatedly in Nifty, Bank Nifty, stocks, 
uh, these are like micro informations within the structures you'll be able to see that many places like the one which i showed you in bank nifty where multiple letters are getting traded that is also like kind of intra bar intra profile structure uh, nuances nuances means nothing like uh, very small micro information but it gives mm. a meaningful edge in the markets that's what jim dalton called as nuances so nuances is a term which is coined by like i mean it's already there in sports everywhere but uh, particularly in trading jim dalton if he is saying nuances means he talking about some uh, strong visual information it has some underlying meaning towards that so here i see this even though intraday they are smart but positionally these levels are meant to be returned mm. back which i had seen that price uh, so i think this point uh, um, answer some of the questions here people were asking for what sort of reference they use for intraday uh, trades this is a good example of like uh, monitoring the the early morning high and low and see early morning high uh, uh, low and high is one it single point on as i said i had given complete uh, classification on that every other day we will be always hitting some sort of nuances that tells us what right. kind of context which is running so uh, but let me be very honest it, you can you're not going to get that on the day one itself so it, it requires that's why it requires a little, little uh, repeated practice Absolutely. so these are the stuff nuances i do follow i might miss out one or two but i think most of the things are here and rajan then if you could share that uh, screenshot sure. of that size of tpo i could share it in the community because people were interested to understand yeah so here the, yeah, people can take screenshot of a screenshot yeah. over here, please. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, please go Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's already available in the public internet. It's already available YouTube. Okay. So we've, we've been using this since for quite some time now, more than now eight plus years we've been using this. Okay. Although we are closing in near the time, but it's interesting. Let's keep going, Rajin Danji. Uh, we still have good audience continuing with us. Uh, very happy to hear from you and learn from you. Okay. See, uh, the point here is, even if you're going to learn these kind of short-term information, many places, uh, it's going to make your life easier. But uh, as I said, still markets are many places unpredictable. Like uh, this information alone, it is not enough. Uh, what if you are a new trader you can focus on this tiny nuances you can interpret support and resistance but many places we will be seeing a combinations of information right same information at times i have to react positively same information but different location right i have to react negatively i'll, I'll, I'll give you one example so I, I'll, I'll talk about an ab poor high and ab poor low right so this is maybe a, this could help you to understand same information how we have to take different opinions different uh, uh, different thinking uh, that kind of approach you may have to take it in the markets many at times because same information right it it never going to work the same way but different location you have to take different uh, uh, different meaning towards it for example let's say i'm, I'm if i am seeing an uh, good uptrend a good uptrend i'm seeing and then suddenly I'm seeing and one of the AB poor law, I'm just seeing, let's say one of the day I'm just seeing an uh, kind of an AB letter A and B is exactly same. AB poor low and price is hitting an all time high or fresh swing highs. I'll, I don't see this AB poor low. This is an AB poor low to me. AB poor low to me. I don't see this as a immediate support. Rather, I'll see this as a risk in the market. It's a tremendous risk. I call this as inventory getting long too long because the, the location is it's happening very close to all time high. So then the very next day itself, we will classify this as a dangerous information. It's kind of an overheated markets inventory getting long to too long, getting long to too long over here. Right. So whereas uh, the, the context, like in, in case of uh, uh, in, in case of not in a strong trending markets, but sometimes you'll be seeing an A, B, poor, low in a sideways market. Sometimes you'll be seeing an, an, an uptrend, then market goes into a sideways, when market goes sideways. So one fine day, you'll be creating an A, B, poor, low. It creates A, B, poor, low, and then start going up so this next day it doesn't clears it failed to clear so it becomes like a important support for me 
this is going to be an immediate support. The information is same here also AB power low, here also AB power low. But here I see this as a risk on longs. I, I see this as an mm. uh, risk on longs. Right. This just is what it takes time for traders to understand. This nuances is what very, this very important. Um, see uh, how I see market profile. I'll tell you. So since I am from the automation uh, uh, background, right. So uh, I always love to play with the visual rules here. Mm -hmm. The context here is uh, even though it's not a plain vanilla uh, rule. So how I can say, uh, say here. So ideally, in market profile, there is one context that location matters. The location of the information, Absolutely. where it is occurring, mm -hmm. it matters. So there are many places RSI had went overbought, but many instances, despite RSI overbought, it still price keeps going higher. Absolutely. So it's it's not the same me uh, same opportunity every time, same pattern, but different opportunities, different times. The context here is what kind of information is happening that is what we have to observe closer so I, i'll try to show you an example how hdfc bank bought a topped out so hdfc bank but this is an amazing insight actually i really have, really love this part actually that same reference but how the location can change the complete interpretation and the market response to it actually yes yes so that is where you need uh, time to spend analyze uh, spend some time classify so uh, if you see Machine learning, right? So re recently, were a lot of buzz is happening on machine learning. I exactly see market profile as kind of a machine learning because machine learning is really, initially it was good in identifying which is cat, which is dog, which is good, which is bad, which is small, which is big. So that is what machine learning, initially it was classifying back in 2012 is where we got that image recognition system. There's something called AlexNet. So that is where uh, so the guy named Elias Schwarzenegger so he's the one uh, who is the master brain behind ChatGPT. Now he left ChatGPT, but uh, he was a master brain. He's the first guy to train a massive uh, uh, artificial intelligence model to classify which is good, which is bad. Same sort of, my point here is same sort of classification we have to do in, not only in market profile, it could be anything. Maybe you are a price action trader. You could be an order flow trader. Maybe you could be an uh, Elliott wave uh, trader, or you might be using Fibonacci or some other techniques. The point here is, the point is same. Over a period of time, you should identify which is a stronger one, which is a weaker one, right? So same like a machine learning, how the machine classifies. You, as a human, we should also learn to classify, let's say if it's a head and shoulder pattern, which is a stronger head and shoulder pattern, yep. which is a weaker head and shoulder pattern. How I can judge that, which is a stronger one, which is a weaker one. That is where you should spend the most of your energy. That is where you can become unique. And that is what it is more important to sustain in this crooked markets for a longer term. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So I'll, maybe I'll, I'll uh, we'll take questions before uh, showing in another example on HDFC bank. So this is like HDFC bank. Um, you, you can see here, right? The poor highs, uh, poor lows coming in next day, getting cleared. So that is mm -hmm. what it happens. Poor low again, it's getting cleared. So it not it, there's no meaning towards that, right? So I just Sorry. simply ignore it. Because that, that, that is what it happens majority of the time. But some places you will be seeing this A, B, poor low. That is what I'm seeing over here. See this, there's an A, B, poor low here. So there's an A, B, poor low. There's an A, B, poor low. Same day, HDFC Bank was hitting an all-time high. Yeah. And uh, next day, there was a news is getting announced that... Uh, I'm sure you might know what kind of news it is. There has been a news got announced that if I, uh, I mean, if I contribution had came down, so MSCA rebalancing is going to happen. Closely, some four point two billion dollars of inflow is anticipated in this coming July, right? So when this information is happening, at the end it is happening. But is it a publicly available information? Is it the first time they are uh, announcing this news? If you ask me, of course it is not. The news has been already there. Uh, Macquarie, some time back, they said that uh, they are anticipating somewhere around $4 billion to $5 billion. Before election, they are, there was an announcement came in. Um, I think the article also published in Money Control also. But nobody cared on that because everybody was busy in election. There was a highly sensitive news is coming in. 
uh but nobody cared uh, particularly uh, small players they never care heard about that they never cared about that also because many people they don't have any fair idea about what an msca rebalancing is all about but the news was happening on 31st 31st is where many companies they said like they are expecting 3.2 billion dollars like jeffries macquarie bank these kind of big guys already came up with an estimation uh even before right the, but the election day everybody's focus went on price action elections and then since then it kept on going up and finally the news was out the news was out saying that uh, the actual inflow what they are anticipating is like 4.2 billion dollars but that's not the key here uh, news can happen any time any any time every time it can behave differently but the point here is at what point the news is happening so the point where news is happening here is like ab poor low next day it is not getting cleared it was ha happening at a major swing high so that is an a signature that an inventory getting long to too long right so long to too long and uh, that is how the market is also getting topped out the very next day we had some dual momentum pattern something similar pattern is what happening in bank nifty also i also recently some 2 3 days back written an article about what is a dual momentum that is how the dual momentum top is getting confirmed some sort of a strong top is getting confirmed there uh, one of the target was like towards a ab poor low so ab poor mm -hmm. nothing two days uh, the ab poor low got a clearance and price uh, started crashing down everybody was in a surprise so it was like 4.2 billion dollars of inflow but why is the market are aggressively selling down so but if you see the structure underlying structure here right the the structure was like ab poor low at a major swing high but the same ab poor low i show mm -hmm. in uh, access bank it, it's not yeah. the same context here it's not the same location if you could see the location here access bank went sideways for quite some time now right. and uh, even if i compress you can see that it's been keep on going sideways went up going sideways went up going sideways this is not an uh, trending market and further it started correcting in that sideways phase we are getting an uh, ab poor low these are like very good interesting data points right and and then uh, so where exactly happening so again lot of sideways price action lot of sideways price action and then we are getting this ab poor low right so we are getting an ab poor low and one more visual low within that visual low there are multiple weaker lows right so more and more base supports are getting extended so these are add on confirmation that the support is getting upgraded this ab poor low is going to be even more a better trading opportunity uh, and uh, slowly the context is unfolding it's not like day one next day itself it's not unfolding it's taking like time still it's taking like 3 4 days of time yeah. to uh, to test still they are trying to test the lows ab poor low they are not able to approach the ab poor lows and slowly it is materializing on the long side right so but still fundamentally speaking mm. uh, it had done with that now if you could see that there is an ab poor high and now we are seeing the selling pressure and you can see that the selling exactly happened from a midline which is midline. also called as a half back another visual nuances price is rejecting exactly from the half back so some dominant sellers are again trying to sell there is one more dominant sellers at uh, ab poor high so two back to back dominant sellers mm -hmm. is what uh, it, it's coming up actually how we combine this micro visual references is also interesting and it all comes from screen time and practice definitely it is required yeah excellent so uh, can we move to questions there are some questions over here rajendra yes, yes, if you are finished with the basics uh, we, uh, we are almost done with the basics okay okay, okay. but i'm sure within that limited time i could add absolutely it's fantastic actually because in fact just just more... the concept that the same references but the location how it changes it has been the learning and the high point for me actually so thank you so much uh, for this very interesting presentation but that is not only limited to market profile that is applicable to almost every other trading absolutely absolutely applicable. absolutely so would we go through yeah, questions yeah we will go through questions one by okay. one yes so we have uh, somebody asking us that uh, order flows shows all orders executed in market or some portion i think it is only the market orders right market so all the orders it shows that only executed orders so all the executed orders will be shown 
in us they have something called dark pools whereas in indian mm -hmm. markets we don't have dark pools so all the orders will be whatever the orders got executed let it be institutional orders fii di orders everybody orders executed it will be reflecting as an actual volume and order flow will capture it whether it's a buying side or selling side it captures clearly. have you used bookmap and seen is there a how i had done a couple of sessions for bookmap also though okay. it's already there in the youtube and how do you see it as compared to order flow uh, right like now, bookmap in indian market is like kind of a naive stage right because bookmap requires level 3 data so right mm -hmm. now indian markets uh, brokers are providing only level 2 data some brokers like uh, zeroda and five paisa they are offering level 3 data but uh, level 3 data is very costly for a data vendor that's one of mm -hmm. the reason uh, bookmap team they are right now limiting only to level 2 data where you will get up to like five levels of bid and ask yeah yeah correct uh, that my view is like as of now level 3 data is what it makes book map unique level mm -hmm. 2 you can learn to some extent only but you will not get the complete picture about the markets and what sort of accuracy you see when you are looking at market flow and order flow combined and is there a risk reward the ratio accuracy doesn't to... matter from market profile and order flow what matters is like your risk reward ratio only so even if like 4 5 trades it is hitting with a stop loss and one trade you are going to make that uh, accuracy doesn't matter Okay, so is the risk reward you manage having a reasonable accuracy? Anything more than fifty percentage uh, with very good risk reward ratio, that is more than fine. In fact, sometimes, the, see, sometimes my... see, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I would like to point mm -hmm. out this accuracy. Uh, that, that's a, a most, uh, uh, I would say, like most overrated thing. The reason is mm -hmm. your accuracy is not going to be consistent every month. Every month, market is going to go do something different. Some month you'll be getting eighty percent accuracy. Will I get the same accuracy next month? Can I get a guaranteed 80% accuracy? No, sometimes it could be like 40% also. Sometimes you might be three months in a row, you may be able to achieve 75% accuracy. Fourth month, will I get the same accuracy? No, sometimes it may go to 25% also. Fourth month, you're doing your accuracy going down doesn't mean like you're doing bad, right? That means like uh, uh, markets are even more harder. Maybe market might be kind next month. So every month your accuracy changes every week the accuracy changes it's a distribution it's not a number and how do you see market profile and point and figure charts is there any sort of a similarity difference how do you see it i do used a point and figure long time back but uh, uh, it also has its own rules but I never seen uh, this much a deeper information in any other tool, not only point and figure, any other tool. Um, I, I, I gone through like Eliad waves. I gone through like uh, the regular Fibonacci, Ichimoku, you, in, you name any tool. I would have gone through that, right? Including book map. And uh, the, the point here is, uh, when talking about market profile, the market generated information, the amount of nuances, the amount of uh, visual information that I'm getting that gives me mm -hmm. the context, which I haven't seen in, in any other tool, which can give me that much amount of information from a trading perspective. So majority of the tools they talk about from an investment perspective, uh, different, different time frames we can track. Uh, even the smart money, we'll be able to track at a higher time frame. We will usually will get to know if Ramesh Damani is buying something or some big guns are buying something. Same day, media channels will be projecting it. So it's a public information, right? Uh, but uh, still, the context remains the same thing. That uh, uh, will they are they smart money in my own time frame? There are many times Warren Buffett bought and then same day Apple stock got crashed two percent, three percent, many days. Same same day it got crashed. But if you see in the long term, still Warren Buffett was winning in his own time frame. Absolutely. But is he a uh, smart money from an intraday perspective? No, absolutely no. And since we're talking about the, the references you get, there is also you use volume profile. And um, do you use all, always with the, the market profile? And how do you use it with the consumption? And what my eyes has been tuned only to market profile. Uh, volume okay. profile, I, I don't even look into that. Even though it, it shows me volume profile, I don't have the habit of watching volume profile because volume profile also gives context i'm not denying that but more than that i had seen tremendous amount of visual reference level. visual reference level there's nothing to talk about visual reference level in volume profile maybe sometimes you can see that price will be coming and touching exactly the hvn but that will be like out of 10 days maybe one day it will be hitting but if you look into the market profile 
maybe sometimes in a day itself you'll be able to spot some three to four five times uh, visual information you'll be able to track positionally you'll be able to track many visual nuances last two days you'll be able to uh, track a couple of visual nuances last five days you'll be seeing okay. more visual nuances so you'll be able to build better context in market profile compared to volume profile okay so i'm not saying like you should not watch volume profile my point Absolutely. is volume profile provides minimal information whereas maximum information more in important context you'll be able to achieve by monitoring the market mm -hmm. profiles uh, following up here like there are it's just synthesis of few questions people are asking that uh, is there a way to not identify but understand if the coming day might be a balancing day or a trending day is there a sort of a context which can indicate of a balance versus continuation balance versus trending. Uh, again i would like to point out to jim's context only so what jim okay. says like whenever uh, let's say like whenever the one time framing is getting broken immediately let's say that a is going up b is going up c is going up and d is breaking down faster the chances of balancing market where it is breaking it is likely to balance a lot so okay. there's one more dimension that we focus something called market confidence. So again, uh, that's another uh, ocean. So faster the one time framing is getting broken, more chances of uh, uh, sideways market is going to be there. So let's say like A was like this, B is going like this, and B period is breaking down faster by C period itself. So chances of price, this point of thing could be a point of control with a very high odds. So you can expect market to go down again, come back to the center point, maybe go up, come back to the center point. So that kind of swings you can anticipate. Or sometimes okay. market might uh, go down, come back up, again goes down, come back up, again goes down, come back up. It's still the point of control will be kind of acting like a kind of a magnet. That is how mm -hmm. the price distribution happens. Okay, very interesting. Mm, there is There are lots of fan of one of your old friend, uh, Mr. Vikas Malik, they are saying hello. He is uh -huh. also known as DD. Uh, uh -huh. He is also a great uh, trader and he shares his insights. Okay. So, our hello from yeah. his fan base over here. Hi, uh, hi. Of course, uh, Rajendra knows him very well, so there's no point asking whether he knows or not. But a big hello from him, uh, yeah, from, sure. the, from his old fan base. Um, and how do you see POC? And comparison to VWAP, because many people are used to using VWAP. And how do you see that with the POC? So I think more or less where the VWAP is. VWAP, I also use in order flow. I use heavily VWAP a lot. Not in market profile, but VWAP on a five-minute time frame. Uh, when it comes to VWAP, if, it's a, if I know that if it's going to be a sideways market, definitely my, eye also, my eyes also will be there on top of VWAP. Particularly in the sideways markets, uh, VWAP is one point I always look for as a potential intraday target. If in case, if there is any scalping opportunity, VWAP could be one of the important target points for me. Because okay. in a sideways, in a strong trending markets, let's say this is going to be the VWAP. So in a strong trending market, the price action will be not touching the price action. It will be keep mm -hmm. more or less. Uh, yeah. You would have seen that. In a yeah. sideways market, that is what generally majority of the time it happens. So let's say this is my VWAP. And the price goes up. Sometimes it 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 uh, does some exhaustion, and it always returns back to the uh, VWAP levels. That since you can see we talk, many times. Since we talked about uh, practicing, is there a way to backtest uh, or replay the TPOs in Ninja Trader? Can you replay the information? Absolutely, you can. You can okay. do the replay. Maybe I'll show you the replay of last Friday's price action. Oh, uh, I think since we are running out of time, let's go through question, and in the end, if we have okay. time, we will. But I, I, in my many of my YouTube videos, I had done the re bar okay. replace in many of my sessions. You can just go back and watch those videos. And then the, the many people are asking, this is a very interesting introduction. And if they want to learn deeper about it, what is the way? Yeah, that... I'll tell you one thing here. This is, uh, I, I've been uh, uh, watching many people. I have been uh, taught many people also. Initially, they show curiosity, but over a period of time, they are not able to digest that hey, too much of information is there. This is not for me. Mm -hmm. I doubt this will be working. That kind of, uh, at some point in time, people are somehow, they are feeling the frustration. Right? The same yes. frustration where we feel it in the gym. <laughs> right. Exact same feeling. So, uh, I, I, there are certain ways, if you are learning market profile, you have to follow as I said, it's going to be dedicated practice, right? So no matter what, the you should not stop the practice because a lot of new information you have to learn 
um maybe if you are already about 30 years old 40 years old uh, people don't want to learn new things even if they want to learn new things they'll stop they'll they'll keep forgetting uh, uh the new things very faster when i started right my age was like approximately i think 2012 right so back then i was like approximately some 30 years old i think uh so back then uh, within a month i was looking into that i don't even know what is an uh, open drive open test drive is all about so i i used to keep forgetting again i have to learn new again i'll be get caught up with my regular activities again i had to forget again i had to start fresh it was a kind of a frustration initially uh, but that frustration phase you have to cross through that so that uh, you have to get that plasticity you have to remember things you have to understand things because when you are looking at the information suddenly you look at there is a poor high so that's a dominant resistance so this is the place where momentum trading is there so you have to learn to classify things so different day you have to classify the same information differently and uh, as i said that is uh, to some extent it is like uh, i will not say like it's difficult it requires strong practice uh, so yeah and how do you learn it systematically because it's a deep ocean is there a sort of a program which takes it from step by step hand holding or trading or doing it live what are the ways in which people no, who no. are potential you are talking about market profile yeah market profile so uh, every i'm i'm not getting learned that everything in one shot itself over a period of time only we are able to classify things so initially sure. uh i there are times i spend time like how a market top out from market profile so over a period of time we started seeing patterns right so it's not like it doesn't happen on day one itself maybe sometimes would have taken like 5 years sometimes would have taken like 7 years and because of that repeated places where a, a particular place a market is able to make a top uh, mm-hmm. now we are able to identify hey, this is how a market tops out this is how a market bottoms out right so mm-hmm. there's something called dual momentum recently we had seen this kind of top i also discussed some 2 3 days back i think so this is like kind of a dual momentum top we we call that as a dual momentum top it's a kind of a ma- price action combination which we apply on top of it's not a price action regular price action technique it's a price action that we watch on top of market profile right so it's not the supply demand or something like that so one of the oops, i'm sorry it's like this bang of t so this is one of the pattern that we watch you can see that it's called as dual momentum the point here mm-hmm. is it is happening at an all time high letter a period uh, it tops out makes an higher high and the, the subsequent day again uh, lower high it also tops at letter a period and that zone i, I just mark that as a zone here Uh, and i see this as a major resistance this is the exact same top happened in hdfc bank and yes. there are similar top happened in many banking stocks also right so even mm-hmm. H- uh, bank nifty also it had made similar top i also done some brief explanation about what is a dual momentum top why it is so important i also written some article over here this is like i returned something like some 5 years back i returned this article is exactly the same setup over here dual momentum how it works uh, how these are like one of the way i see this part likewise i had classified 25 different types of how a market tops out right so over a period of time what we learned is like we classify mm-hmm. things so like machine learning yeah, absolutely yeah, so. and in when you use market profile do you use it on future or you use on uh, spot charts so i use market profile on uh, uh, only on futures because in futures is where the real traders they trade in the market the big traders mostly they trade in futures only mm-hmm. right so op- index nobody trades right only index stocks only they trade so if i am a nifty trader i should watch only nifty if i am a bank nifty trader i should watch only bank nifty to understand so, so, what is but how do you manage the gap or the difference when the contract rollover happens because the rollover is usually i always under- see something like uh, stocks i'll be always using continuous contract because uh, stocks are illiquid that is fine uh, yeah but what uh, about index like but when uh, it comes to index bank- i always use july contract you see that so that i'll not be seeing the gaps at all so okay. if you see only nifty and bank nifty only in market profile only i use monthly contracts okay uh, even in trading view also you can see that monthly contract continuous contract those kind of things are there but when it comes to stocks it's okay i i, I can manage with no but 
in index charts, let's say when you will go from July to August, let's yeah, say I'll the, the August contract. But the premiums, the difference is almost three hundred points. All the old references, they are you know they become different. So how yeah, do you carry will, forward the information? It, it will it will become different. So we always adapt to the new information. Okay. So, so whatever whatever references not, we'll are there, the old okay. uh, nuances, we'll adapt to oh. the new nuances. So there is no carry forward of some, old references. Some important things we'll carry forward, like AB poor, mm -hmm. low, RP poor. These are like very major references. We have to carry forward. Rest everything I'll ignore it. So you will carry forward it at the old price, or you will man you will add up the gap and then shift it in up many or times, down. The same nuances will be present in the since it is Nifty Bank Nifty highly liquid. Whatever happened in the same thing will be oh. available in the next nuance okay. next uh, contract also. But okay. sometimes uh, it could be different. Uh, sometimes you will the nuances will not be there in the current contract, but next contract will be there. So we have to give importance. I but if something the sensitive most... like AB poor high, AB yeah. poor lows, RP poor kind of major refer, major support zone, major resistance, we may have to carry forward. So Surya has asked the most interesting question. He is asking, how do you catch hero zero trades by using market profile? Uh, you should not do that. So there are many times you have to learn to trade small, many times, right? Many times you have to trade kind of one is to one kind of risk reward ratio. Mm -hmm. So the moment you started looking into zero hero trades are always looking for a zero, I mean, hero trades kind of setup, then you should not get into trading at all. Okay. Because trading, uh, if you are a, if you are a daily trader, uh, there are uh, not every day market is going to give you a bigger opportunity. Sometimes you absolutely. may have to trade smaller opportunities, particularly in a low volatile environment. You may the opportunities will be very much compressed. You 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 are not going to get the similar returns. Your returns absolutely. will be very much diminished. But when markets are getting uh, super overheated, like kind of election days, kind of places where market will be bouncing back and forth, like big mm -hmm. movements will be there. Wicks will be blooming like anything your opportunities will get bigger at the same time your risk also gets bigger when reward is getting bigger that means your risk is also Absolutely. getting bigger so that is we cannot stop that so last few questions uh, rajendran uh, sachin is asking do you have or is there is it possible to create a screener to look at stocks or which have a trending day or a double distribution day see one of the thing what beginners should stop staying away is like what kind of day it is whether it's a double distribution day trend day or uh, uh, there are very few places today's structure will play a major role on tomorrow's structure right so yes some some places like double distribution yes it is important p shape profile it is important is there any scanner is there if you ask me nobody had created one because it is not that easy to create also so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if at all, if it is there, I am the first one to create that. So it is difficult for, at my level. It is still, I feel it is like a little difficult. Some people, they try to achieve. There's a, a guy called 50charts.in. So he provided mm -hmm. charts for market profile, I think. To some extent, he had done some basic scanners. Uh, but yes, it's a very basic scanner. But in case of a double Even distribution day... also, they had done a bunch of yeah. scanners, like poor, high, poor, low scanners, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. failed auction scanners. So bunch, uh, some unique scanners they built. But still, they are like, it, it's okay. First timers, they can, for them, it will be useful. But if you are a day-to-day -day trader, on a daily basis, if you are watching the information, you don't need scanners at all. Like, hardly, I don't look into the entire universe of Nifty. I'll be mostly trading Nifty, Bank Nifty, or maybe a bunch of 10 high heavyweight stocks like Reliance, IC. But in fact, uh, when we use Bell TPO, there is a way to mark the singles. And by yes. quick glance across, you know, 20, 30, 50 liquid stocks, it is easy to spot if there are. Uh, you can, you can scan in Bell TPO. Yeah. They have. Uh, and is there, a, what sort of a, uh, importance do you give to single prints within the chart or within a stock actually, if there is in the middle of the distribution? So it's a double distribution, which is, is split evenly. How do you see that? See, when you're seeing a single print zone, you cannot ignore it because many places, um, we apply the concept called uh, acceptance rejection. Mm -hmm. So again, acceptance, we again classify as stronger acceptance, weaker acceptance, stronger mm -hmm. the acceptance, major the trend changes are weaker the acceptance. It could be a trap. So maybe I'll, I'll try to give an example here. Sure. So that you get a fair idea what kind of classification we had arrived over a period of time. So. So majorly these days we do only classification part. We we uh, we learn something, but out of that we try to classify which is good, which is bad, which is stronger, which is weaker. So ideally, end of the day you'll be finding that context only. Okay. So I'll maybe I'll give an example like 
in terms of acceptance in terms of rejection so that you get a fair idea how we treat single print zones absolutely so imagine i'm having a double distribution here so this is like case <clears> one <throat> so we have two distributions the bottom distribution one top distribution two separated by a strong single print zone let's say this is a single print zone here Single print zone. So let's say uh, previous day price went higher, and uh, typically the single print zones are likely to act like a, in a strong trends. The single print zones are going to act like a major support zones. That means many times you can see that price will be getting dipped down below that. Immediately you'll be seeing a responsive buying. So buyers will be taking control of the price action, and you'll be seeing like point of control will be building above that. So that is signatures of a good trend evolving in the markets. They're not major trend change. They, they are like kind of mostly a trap for the sellers. Mm -hmm. They're mostly a trap. <clears throat> and uh, there are, this is one particular example. Likewise, you can keep on spotting examples over here. Like another classification you can do like uh, and strong acceptance. If it's a strong acceptance, you can see right from the start, you'll be seeing a clean change in trend. For example, same context, but different price action. Mm -hmm. So for example, Let's say I'm having a double distribution here, same distribution, same case. Here also market went up. Here also I have the single print zones. Here also I have the single print zones here. I have this SP zone. SP means single print zones. So like single letters, maybe like G and G and G. Horizontally, if you monitor, you'll be having only one TPOs. Right. But let's say if at all, uh, right from the open, sometimes you'll see like price goes down. Right from the start, you'll be seeing and witnessing a high confidence price action. So this is kind of a uh, strong acceptance. We call this like strong acceptance. It could be a major trend change. This could be a major positional trend change. If you're seeing that, it, it's a major positional shorting opportunity in this kind of markets. So strong acceptance means there's a good change in trend. That's what we call as a change in trend. We'll be seeing like value area will be building lower compared to yesterday's value area. Right from the start, market will be closing down strong negative closing will be there so all the context will be ex saying that it's completely bearish mm -hmm. and there's one more classification which says like it's an acceptance but it's not a stronger acceptance so for example let's say i'm having a third scenario where i'm having a double distribution here and i'm having a uh, kind of a similar single print zones an SP zone, right? This kind of single print zones here, but price is accepting down. Morning, if you would have seen that, it looks like crazy price action. Oh my God, the market is crashing down. But end of the day, it, it comes back up, right? So mm -hmm. maybe it settles down. Still value area will be lower. Still price will be closing negative, but not strong closing negative. Mm -hmm. So many a times this turns out to be a trap in many instances. So we call this like weaker uh, Acceptance. Acceptance is there, oh. value down, price close, negative. But still, is it a strong closing? If you ask me, it's not a strong closing. Absolutely. So Fantastic first half, exactly. you feel like, oh my God, the market is crashing down. But second half, market doesn't do anything. Our market got into a balance. And even sometimes market even closes positive also. But if you look into the value area, value area would have been went completely lower, but mm. not a strong closing. So those kind of things, we classify that as a weaker acceptance. Mostly a trap. And uh, next day onwards, uh, maybe price opens higher. Still, it drops, but still, it keeps going higher. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. that kind of trap is what generally uh, it makes people to go crazy. People, uh, even though sometimes they take a best of the best decision uh, because of the price action, right? Next day, they will lose hope and then they will give up on that next day downtrend. They, 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 somehow they assume that it's going to it's gonna be a downtrend and they'll close it down. And that is how strong money they take control over the uh, players. I feel like so these what, are the nuances which really keep packet profile so exciting and so you know engaging to learn more and more about this actually because there is just unlimited context and you are only limited by your own sort of a imagination and ability to synthesize the information which yes. you can put into practice actually this is amazing thanks a lot uh, Rajan. sure so any more <clears throat> that we have yeah just a couple of more questions remaining um, we can go with that let's quick yeah let's quickly go through it. If you have weak money on both sides, up and down, 
Yes. Then which side you think can be, would be clear? What sort of information would you see to respond to this? So that is what we call this. There are many times you're going to see this complex information. That's what Jim mm -hmm. Dalton does uh, something called chunking. So there's a process okay. called chunking. Chunking is like, uh, there are many times you'll be seeing an AB poor high on the top also, poor low on the bottom also. Sometimes you'll be seeing mm -hmm. a poor high also will be there, poor low on, also will be there on the same day. So which side I should trade, take a trade. So that is where uh, we take one step back and then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, always try to do chunking. Chunking means it's a process that a complex piece of information, you break it down into smaller pieces mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'll be waiting for one side to break out so that the other side, I'll make it as like a dominant support dominant. or dominant resistance. Okay. So that, I just that's follow a, up on this. That's what I call as a dual dilemma, uh, which means right. you'll be having weaker uh, information on both the sides. Both that the sides. if you are a market profile player, uh, very frequently you're going to encounter such kind of kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, both the sides weaker information is there. So which side I have to trade? Uh, that is a place uh, you have to follow the Jim Dalton's principle chunking. Chunking. Yeah. And is there a way market profile can help us understand which stocks are getting into consolidation or accumulation or distribution? See, I don't think market profile at a broader level will not talk about accumulation and distribution. Even mm -hmm. though because of the accumulation and distribution, we get the value area, but we don't talk about yeah. accumulation and distribution at an investor level. So that is like mm -hmm. an investor should worry about that. A trader should not worry about accumulation and distribution or a markup phase or a markup down markdown mm -hmm. phase. That is more of an investor's information. There are certain things which are investor's information. There are things which are trader's information. So we should not confuse both. So Vishist is asking, do you take into account IV because many people trade options and beyond market profile, IV, is that something which you Only monitor? one instance we look into IB, like when there is an, uh, there's a concept called IB breakout failure uh, or like failed auction. That's the only place we give importance to IB. Otherwise, I don't watch IB on a day-to-day -day basis. Even in Jim Dalton's also, you can't even hear a single word that uh, IB. IB is monitoring. And IB is a very legacy I... concept which was working uh, during uh, flow trading days. During the flow trading days, yeah. right? so right. Right. it was working because uh, uh, people uh, back in those days, uh, first one hour is mostly dominated by the intraday traders. So they mm -hmm. are the first one to make the move always. So they are the first one hour. Always the intraday crowd will be taking a trade. But now I think the intraday traders are present every time. <clears throat> Long term Absolutely. players also present across the day. So back then they have a context called like dumb money opens the market at the start and uh, the smart money closes at the last. That's what the context back then. But now yeah. because of the technology, right, that thin Absolutely. line has been gone now. So now anybody can trade, come and trade anytime. So long term yeah. players can come and trade throughout the day. Obviously, they're gonna presence is going to be throughout the day. Uh, and uh, even intraday traders, you can find uh, within traders itself, they say like I trade only from 9 to 10. Some people, they say, like, I only trade only in the last one hour. So they, they play only straddle, strangle or something like that. So now we are technologically enabled. You don't need to go to a floor. Back then, you have to go to a floor. Absolutely. You have to physically sit there and then you have to take a trade. It was a different set of behavior. Now so that we have uh, many questions, I will keep the last three. Uh, yeah. One is, uh, while we talk about Jim Dalton, uh, have you referred to Peter Stratelmeyer's book at any point of time? And there is a reference of clock in Peter Stratelmeyer's book on SOM's structure of market. Uh, do, what mm -hmm. do you think about that concept in, in case you have gone through it? No, I haven't gone through uh, uh, Peter Stratelmeyer's book. Uh, okay. Usually some of the concepts, like they have something called minus development. Some few concepts I went through that, but not in a very detailed fashion. Okay. Uh, how do you monitor for continuation using the market profile? So, as I said, you'll be you should start monitoring the uh, continuous market generated information. So the, mm -hmm. the same day, which is looking like a support, very quickly it can change into a resistance. For example, today I'm getting a poor high. Mm -hmm. Next day it is not getting cleared. Subsequent okay. day it will create a poor low. Again, it will create a uh, support zone and market will start bouncing back. So I cannot hold on to the same views here. So I have to shift okay. my view because the information is changing here. That is how we monitor the mm -hmm. development. So sometimes, fact, you, uh, sometimes you cannot some... rigidly hold on to the view. Sometimes you have to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one question was about using the intrinsic volatility. Uh, market profile looks at the structure, but do you use IV or the intrinsic volatility because many people trade options? Yes. 
do i use iv yes i do look into that not on a day to day okay. basis but i uh, when the week is starting or when there is okay. some news announcement is there uh, when there is an earning season is there i do look into the ivs okay uh, but i don't look ivs on an intraday perspective i don't look into that at, at, okay. maybe what is the number 13 14 15 what what number it is that i am very That's... much aware about that okay. because okay. when ivs are moving crazily higher we may have to adopt the strategy we, we cannot play the directional strategy maybe sometimes mm-hmm. we may have to go into conservative mode because option premiums will be heavy that Absolutely. basic knowledge definitely one should have that but okay. that is not a strategy okay. that okay. is a part of the game when ivs mm-hmm. are different you have to uh, have a different approach so basically you look at the traffic and then determine what speed you want to drive your car at <laughs> yes yes okay uh, last question or maybe uh, you should say like which car i should drive <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely people are asking uh, that uh, do you do live sessions or do you teach in any way are you based out of bangalore where people can reach out to you for learning this deeper offline i don't do that but uh, okay. live i do teach like i i do teach yes okay and how do you teach like it's a course so it's a live classes how do you do that it is live classes always we i love to talk about, about the current market situations okay and, and it's, it's always live every day we spend the morning one hour and afternoon one hour so morning there will be a different set of market observation afternoon okay. there will be a different set of market observation so okay. only one thing uh, that you can expect is like uh, what kind of what information i am seeing what mm-hmm. is the underlying context behind that that is the one thing that you can always learn and as i said market always do something different uh, every other day but within that when market is doing something different within that how we can extract meaningful information using market profile so rajendra we are almost 40 minutes above the time and i would like to just uh, summarize the session by saying by by reflecting what hema has written that uh, we can define our trading career split into before market profile and after market profile and i completely agree that even my thinking and trading has changed a lot and like hema says market profile keeps us continuous learning which gives us more confidence on market understanding because the market generated information is something which is unique and thankfully algos are not able to catch as much as possible so that provides us some edge still actually So, so Rajendra, tell you why there is a strong edge is there in the market profile. Uh, major reason is like people look for faster learning and then they want to deploy on day one itself, and yeah. that is the only thing which is going to differentiate you from them, because uh, majority of the traders, eighty five percent, maybe we can put that number, uh, they look for faster learnings. Uh, they want quick learnings. They want to implement from day one. like uh, intraday straddles so easy to learn right so nothing much so hardly you, you go in the morning end of the day you will get that learning next day you can deploy money and you can start trading with that mm-hmm. that kind of uh, expertise you cannot get from market profile absolutely, absolutely. Uh, because uh, every 3 months you are you you're going to get some incremental learnings right right uh, that is what so thank you so much sir rajendran yeah on behalf of the entire trading community thanks a lot Sure. and if possible please do share the powerpoint so that we can share otherwise people yeah. can look at the uh, if you could share it with me i will then share it across sure, sure. and really and thanks all the viewers for joining us we will be getting the video and uploading in the next week thanks a lot for joining rajendran thanks a lot for making this happen much appreciate you taking time thank you thank you thank you for uh, uh, it's my pleasure to talk to your community and thank you for you guys coming and listening patiently <laughs> and yeah it's more than 100 people are there i'm really amazed that you know despite 45 minutes we are stepping over the time and still people are continuing so yeah. much up it means we can understand what sort of engaging session it was and the amount of learning it have a good day ahead guys thanks a lot bye janojan thank you everyone thank you